morning to you lovely you gardeners it is so it's so wonderful to have your company i'm here with my lovely friend sean ryan morning morning Stu's in his shed out there keeping control of everything so we're we were very excited aren't we yeah and i'm just talking to mary Andy. you yeah, look beautiful you, you know. look gorgeous you are you are absolutely you are the stunning prettiest plant you are stunning <laughs> Yeah, no, I do. I really love you. I do. I love um, you. No, seriously, we've got we've got a great show. Uh, the oleanders were the best seller yesterday, and I will let you know on the nursery we did have other colours, but only the pink remained. But we did have the most stock of the pink. Yeah, it's important to let and you know the pink is incredibly popular, but yeah. we had the biggest stock of the pink. Um, and we've just literally got our lovely Craig, who helps us uh, with all the plants and our, our potting shed setup. He's just planted two of these in these gorgeous planters on here. Now, in honesty, as the oleanders get bigger. You won't need anything around them, but we no. just thought we'd give you an idea of what they could look like right now. Uh, and those pots are coming up. They are on clearance, so when they're gone, they are gone. But we better give you a few basic details because you might be brand new to the show. <laughs> so, so first of all, delivery is six ninety nine per order. So it is per order. It's not per item. It's per order. However, if you spend over forty pounds you will actually get free delivery. And I think on the show yesterday, over half the customers spent over £40. So yeah. get yourself some compost. Get it. I just think it's great not to have to pay for delivery. Yeah, absolutely. Particularly when it's 6 99 If you can just tip your order over that £40 mark, and we've got a few really low-priced items on the show for you today that will help you to do that. And then um, this Ooh, where's Miss Sarah is your... Free... Where's Sarah gone? This... I don't know where she's gone. <laughs> she's been potted up, I think. I'll find Put her. Is she down there? No. Uh, anyway... She was oh, here a minute oh, ago. We're going mad back. Oh, there she is. There she is. Hello, there Sarah. She is. <laughs> so we're talking to all the plants today. Um, your free gift today is this gorgeous Sarah Bernhardt peony. Arrives as a bare root. I mean, it's one of the most stunning peonies we've ever, ever brought you. And we do sell this for nearly £10. It's a really extraordinary peony, but you get one free with every order, don't Absolutely you? Absolutely every single order, and she is extraordinary. We are talking, like, massive blooms on here. Petalicious is what we call them. Um, they, they can get up to eight inches in diameter. I mean, like, imagine that's flowers yeah. are some of the most beautiful, aren't they? They really are, and this one is extraordinary. Now, even if you already got the free gift last week you might as well get another one because yeah, i think peonies can look wonderful in you know, if, you, if you've got a board and you've got maybe three beautifully spaced totally. or a couple in matching pots they'd be ideal yeah uh, you do need a fairly big pot for peony when it gets established but as it's a bare root a smaller pot would be fine for the first few years so that's uh, a couple of things you need to know also to unlock all the offers we do have that special offer code don't we we do indeed this week's code is ygtv1324 that is a really important code every single time you place an order there's a little box when you place the order it says do you have an offer code yes yes you do it's that one right there so put that in because that unlocks the free postage over 40. it puts your sarah bernhardt peony your free gift into your basket but it also unlocks all the offers the double up deals the buy one get one free the savings and there's so many savings to be had just here. make sure you get the offer code right i tried it last night and i was I, for some reason i put in one two three four because i was uh, being lazy and it was wrong what did you order hey mm, what do you think what do you think I think you went for my favourite, which is the Euphorbia, mine is Merlot. I did. You did. You're so right. Oh, yeah, you did. Uh, yeah, I said that I was going to go for that. I did. So uh, do use off code, as Beck said. Right, we're going to begin, though, with the oleanders because there's a huge story around these. And you'll know if you've been abroad in, in recent years, in recent decades, to Spain, Italy, uh, France, America, you'll have seen oleanders because they Absolutely. grow beautifully in the Mediterranean, but they grow very well in the UK, don't they? They do indeed grow very well, considering they grow in those hot countries, you know, on the sides of roads, uh, you know, they, they freely grow. It's amazing that they will actually grow here in the UK. They're hardly down to about minus five. So yeah. once these get established, they're going to be absolutely fine. It's the perfect time to get them now and plant them. They've got so much time over the spring and summer now yeah. to get established, haven't they? I, and the stock that we've got here at the U Garden Nursery is, we believe, to be the best stock we've ever seen. We work with the top breeder in Sicily, uh, known as the top breeder in the world. It's a family business there's actually a wait list to be one of their clients so we are very very lucky to have their oleanders here in the uk on you garden um 
evergreen so i mean it's yeah. march right look how good the foliage looks they look amazing Don't and they, they do look good all year round because of this yeah. beautiful evergreen foliage it's it is incredible but then in the summertime as you can see these are starting to bud you've got one that's starting to open here this. they do get absolutely smothered in this beautifully scented gorgeous pink flowers and they don't get huge no you know, they can in their native countries but actually here in the uk we don't expect them to get much bigger than maybe you know three four feet absolute yeah. maximum um but they flower all summer long so long yeah i mean i've even had oleanders still flying towards november time as yeah. well um one thing we do need to tell you you cannot eat any part of an oleander and that's humans and all pets as well so do yeah. bear that in mind Pruning. Very much like a lot of the things yeah, in our yeah. garden. I mean, I, so many things. Yeah, when you actually, I mean, you've got a dog, I've got a cat, and there are, yeah, there's a lots of things that you've there got to be a bit, bit careful of. Um, but we can honestly say, just admire their beauty. The club price actually, 26 99 for two. That yeah, is it's extraordinary, a one, one isn't free. it? Yeah. That's why we're showing you two of these. You can get two of these. And I love the pairing. I know we often say the rules are to plant in threes, but there's certain things well, that. that when you have a pair and you have that symmetry, it looks yeah. absolutely perfect. You're going to feel like holiday sitting on your patio in your garden, one of these either side of your lovely little seating area. It will feel like you've been transported. Because oh. I'm predicting... A lovely summer. Yeah, no, well, look, we've had such a wet winter that I think Mother Nature does tend to even yeah, out. Let's hopefully. hope so anyway. Let's hope so. These love full sun, so that is it, important. So you really need to put them in full sun. If you try and put them in part shade, they'll probably survive, but they won't flower as much and they'll get a bit leggy. So you do need to put them in full sun. Indeed. And I, I think, I mean, if you live down south, you might want to put these in beds and borders, but in pots, it just means that if it is, you know, if you do have those really cold snaps in winter, you can just protect them a bit more easily yeah, as well. Yeah, it's very, very easy to do. And there's very little maintenance that you need to do to these either. I mean, I would recommend after the, the, the blooms are faded, just trim them back, just deadhead. It will encourage a few more blooms to come through. But as far as, you know, maintenance pruning is, concerned there's very little yeah. that you need to do to these and they grow in a lovely kind of compact nature as well now we say hardy to minus five when they're established my friend's got one of these he's had it years and he lives in only which is near milton Keynes. and his has grown really tall his was i think i'd say about six foot oh really okay but then it did it got to about minus eight in his garden maybe even minus ten so i'll be honest the top did die but he chopped it off and there's loads of new growth so they can really survive even lower temperatures than minus five when established they're, they're extraordinary there's a lovely sweet fragrance as well of course really sweet really delicious but i just think they're going to be well they're going to be a feast for your senses aren't they not only yes. for your your nose but also for your eyes those gorgeous kind of exotic looking clusters of pink blooms you're going to get that will top this they will smother the top of this plant it'll be incredible but they they have been selling so quickly uh, and I know when we both spoke to our head gardener Peter even though I think we got something extraordinary like 10,000 or something yeah, a lot, um, we know how popular these are yeah because obviously we've got a big mail order business as well but the st we do not think there'll be enough stock to last anything like the summer and say currently all of the colors have sold out so I believe there's only the pink though but we did have more stock of the pink because it's the most popular one don't they look great at the pots, though? Yeah, I yeah. really like this. Craig's done a fantastic job of making these look. I mean, to be honest, they stand alone, look absolutely yeah. beautiful. But this looks really delightful, doesn't yeah. it? Yeah. And you imagine when they burst into pink in a couple of weeks' time. Uh, buy one, get one free, though. And, I mean, that's why they are selling so fast. It was the top seller yesterday on New Garden TV, the most popular item. And I think it's going to be exactly the same today. Now, these pots, they're on... Clear, clear outs, yeah, aren't they? they are. Close we, out, clear out, run clearance. Down. Run, run down. down is what we call them. But basically, that once they are gone, they are gone. They're yes. not going to come back, unfortunately. And we're a bit gutted about that because these are we really pretty, aren't them. they? love them. I love these. They are plastic. Could you tell that they are plastic no. looking at those? You really can't. No, they, they look like a really heavy pot, don't they? They do. But this is the benefit of having plastic, isn't it? Because it yeah. means it's easier for you to move around your garden. But these aren't the cheap, nasty plastic. Oh, no. You know those plastic pots you buy and they last one season and then they just crack and break. I, That's not the case with these. They're UB stabilized they're frost resistant they're really sturdy they're proper quality and they're going to last you for years i just don't like pots that look plastic mm. and they don't look 
anything like plastic. Absolutely they do look not. like a stone or a resin. Yeah. Really nice shape to them, beautiful. And that price, you get double up. So basically you need to put two of those in your basket and you'll get a price of only $27.99. What was the original price we sold this for? Was it? I think it was $29.99. We for, looked at the bottom of the that, box, Yes, for one, we? wasn't it? It was $29.99 yeah. was our original price for one of these. And, and you're going to get two of them for $27.99. Yeah. They are amazing value, yeah. but um, not likely now to last the week, actually. No, probably not. We are getting busier as the season progresses. Um, so do remember, as Sean said, with a double up deal, you put two in your basket, enter the code, and then you'll see the savings come off. Whereas with your Oleander, which is a buy one, get one free, you put one in your basket, enter the code, and the other one appears for you. Yeah. Um, but do... Um, do come through and have a chat with Bex and I, won't you, today? Yeah, please. Yes. We were sending loads of pictures yesterday. You know, we've got an email address, ygtv at yougarden.com. It's a great place to send any pictures to us. We love seeing what's going on yeah. in your gardens. But uh, Stu's just telling us everybody that's chatting on YouTube, on Facebook, people that are watching. So good morning to Alwyn, Elaine, Amanda, yeah. Angela, Eleanor. Oh, great. Ian, Ian. Good morning. And Philip, I'm recognising so many Roger, names here. Yeah. I love having your company. Victoria as well, good morning to you. Yeah, oh, We love it, we really do. So yeah. uh, yes, uh, any questions, any comments, just email and uh, Stu will pass us on to us. Uh, now, um, oh. we've got the really? most amazing perennial collection, but it's... Oh, yeah, I was just hearing how many we've got. We are really getting yeah. low on this, and it's a great collection and, to get. And, and we're just going to be really honest. We normally have big stocks of everything on the on the live shows because a lot of you stream it later, so we don't want lots of sellouts. But this one, we are talking only a few handfuls. And I mean, it is a lucky dip perennial collection, and we've got a selection of what you might get, but they're all in nine cents a pot. the value, Bex. And it works out just over two pound a pot, doesn't it? Absolutely, and these are perennials. So these are plants that are gonna come back for you year after year after year. And I think there's a few different types of people that are gonna go for these. I think if you've got an established garden already, but you've got some gaps in borders, this is yeah. the sort of collection that you want to put into those gaps. Also, if you are in a new house, new garden, not much going on, you've got bare borders, this will be a brilliant collection because this will fill that so quickly. Or a lot of people get to an age where, I mean, my mum used to love putting lots of summer bedding in and she still likes the summer bedding, but it's hard work replacing it every year. So you yeah. might be thinking, do you know what? I'm actually going to go for more perennials and not have the hassle. So we'll give you a little idea of some of the ones that you may get in this collection. So should we just randomly pick some bags? Well, I picked up my first one, which is the Ooh, heuchera. Like um, and I, I do love this one. My mum's a big fan of heuchera. She's got several varieties in her garden. It's absolutely fantastic. It's definitely more about being a foliage plant but you get these lovely kind of flowers that come up from these as well so easy to look after very low maintenance really good one for front of borders and great in shade that one yeah isn't it? wonderful yeah. for shade now i've got a gm here and um what i love about gms you you generally get bright colors so yellows and oranges and reds but gms really really flower for months and months and months uh if you really want color all year round in your garden a gm will give you several months of color amazing right, i'm gonna come over uh, your side I'm gonna pick up uh, beautiful geranium you know if you watch us regularly you know what a fan uh, Sean and I are of geraniums because they just free flower yeah. they wonderfully create this um, lovely ground cover in your in your gardens you know stopping those weeds from coming through flowering for a really long time as well and just you know really hardy very yeah. easy to look after and then if you're looking for height I've just picked up a hollyhock here and it, this one is actually the Charters Mix, which is lovely. It's part of the Lucky Dip. But you know with a hollyhock, you're going to get so much great height as well. My mum must have got to about eight or nine feet last year. Oh, wow. Yeah. So That's it is amazing. A, it is a Lucky Dip. Uh, but these are just some of the plants that you make. And I love a Lucky Dip because you'll get a big box of live. I think that's yeah. really exciting. You'd, you'd be, like, we, like we open up the box of these and we're like picking up going, oh, yeah, that's, that's my hollyhock. Oh, Coreopsis, that one. That's yeah. a lovely yellow one. Grows about 60 centimetres by 60 centimetres. Achillea. 
We've got uh, Campanula. Delphinium. We've got Delphinium. That, yeah. We've got the Physotegia. What's this one down here? We've got the, oh, Digitalis. I mean, You're going to get nine of them, basically. Yeah. Um, and I just think it'll be really exciting when you get that box home, you open it up, you start doing your research and working out where to plant them. And we should say, we do do a mini perennial collection that's a plug plant collection, but that is um, that will need growing on. These are already really well established. So these will flower this year. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Totally. You won't have to wait a year or so. No. All of these will be amazing this year and for many years to come. They are going to sell out. There's not many left at all, but amazing. Value. What a shame we haven't got many of those. I know, it's a shame, isn't it? Right, are we going that way? Yeah, Bex? we're going this way. Got loads of new very, items, very uh, cute plant here. I really quite like this, and this is a really good value one for you, in actual fact. So this could be one that you want to add to your basket if you need to tip it over that forty pounds mark. Yeah. And I think it's really useful. This is a kitchen bay that we're talking about here for you. Now, I love bay. I think it's a great ingredient for um, uh, cooking. Yeah, because you're a good cook, aren't you? I, well, I like to think yeah, so. Yeah, you are. You are good. But yeah, bay goes in so many things. There's a lovely flavour, you know, for soups, for stews, for bolognese, for lasagnas, all those sorts of things. And I love having a bay bush just outside the kitchen door. I nip out whenever I'm doing some cooking. I've got my bay, I've got my rosemary, I've got my thyme. Mm. I grab all of those herbs and I take them back inside to do my cooking. It's a really, I, I just love that, that I can go outside and grab my herbs as and when I need them. And this is just £7.99. Now, it, it's, um, it is in a 12 centimetre pot. It's about 30 centimetres. The thing with bay trees uh, you can actually pay a fortune as they get bigger if you've got a, a shaped one like a standard so it's i think it's the most affordable bay we've ever had actually. i agree yeah, yeah totally uh, you might want to go for a pair of them. They look great in pots, obviously. Yeah. But I love the smell of the leaves, don't you? Yeah, I love them. Ooh. I really like the flavour that they can add to cooking. Obviously, they are evergreen as well. So as far as, um, you know, having some mm. interest in your garden, it always looks good. It has the Royal Horticultural Society Award of Garden Merit. So it, it's just easy to look after. Yeah. Very, very simple. Pretty hardy as well. We're talking probably down to about minus five. So again, all but the worst of the winter weather. I've got a, a slightly bigger bay bush outside couple of the leaves look a little bit straggly after the winter, yeah, but, but they bounce back so quickly. None of us look that good after winter. We all look <laughs> all a bit heavy and normally, don't we? After winter, I do. I, I, <laughs> I just love going outside, as I say, and grabbing my herbs as and yeah. when I need them. And I've got a really interesting bush out there because it's evergreen. Well, uh, great price on that one. Great little basket filler and only £7.99. And don't forget, the postage is six ninety nine per order, not per item. But if you spend over £40, you will get free delivery as well. Right, we have very excited about this clematis collection though the yeah. boulevard aren't we these are gorgeous my mum's got these well i've got yeah. one of these and i think that uh, this one's a really really exciting um collection because you might know clematis as being you know a vigorous climber and sometimes yeah we want those big ones that'll cover the fence and go over some ugly structures or walls or anything in our garden but sometimes what happens with those slightly larger climbing varieties is that the flat because they will flower up at the top mm. and the flowers disappear over the fence and that's into the so annoying is then we think, oh, well, my clothes hasn't got any flowers this year. Then you go next door, it's like, oh, they're, they're all, all there. <laughs> so annoying. You don't get no. that with this. The Boulevard Patio Clematis was, it was bred by Raymond Everson, um, a really world He's renowned a great breeder, breeder yeah. when it comes to this. But it was bred to be compact, but also it will flower along the length of the stem. So you don't lose all of those flowers over the top of the fence. It stays nice and compact. And they as tend well. to flower all summer long as well, yeah. don't they? Yeah. So, I mean, around, we were always very careful when we say when, because things are changing all the time. It depends where you've got it planted and things. But essentially, from around June, right the way through to yeah. those first frosts, right the way through to October time, and you I, will get flowers. I know it. with my mum, so you, she kind of gets quite a big burst of flowers early summer. But then, yeah, she continues to you get... just keep getting flowers yeah. coming. Yeah, and they're and amazing. And they are full-size flowers as well. It's a more compact plant, but you still get full-size flowers on So them. if you have got a smaller garden, we always say with you garden, it's gardening for everyone. So it doesn't matter what type of garden you've got what kind of experience these are great in a smaller more contained area they're gorgeous they actually so they're one of my mum's favorite plants in her garden she got two of these from your garden about I think about four or five years ago. Yeah. Yeah. Well, uh, that's the one I've got in my garden because I'm a big fan of the blues and the purples and things. And I've got it in the um, little trellises that we've actually mm. got on the show today. The I might planters. grab those. Can I grab yeah, them? Yeah, yeah. Because because they are um, not not as big a variety, not as big a climber, they actually work really well in these smaller Can pots. 
Uh, pruning wise, yet. we always prune ours back about February. Uh, just really quite hard back actually. You and can, then, yeah. Yeah, and they grow back year after year after year. With all clematis, we always advise just keeping the roots a little bit shady. So clematis, although they, 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 they love the sun, the roots need a little bit of shade. So quite often if it's in a pot, just plant around the roots. Yeah, so what you can so do, that'd be great, actually. these are the eclipse planters and these, um, so I've got one uh, boulevard clematis in one of these. What I've done is I've put, I put slate and stone across the top there yeah. and that's gonna help to shade the roots. What you could do is put other pots around it, which creates that shade at the bottom, but keeps the top of it in the sunshine. There's lots of ways that you can do it. But these eclipse planters, they are on a double up deal. So if you are in our amazing discount club, which if you're not, I highly recommend you join. They are just eight pounds and ninety. Oh, sorry, no, fourteen pounds and ninety-eight pence for two, and then you'll get ten percent discount off there as well. Nine ninety-nine for one, or fourteen pounds and ninety-eight pence if you put two in yeah. your basket. But Make you, sure you use yes. The paint. They're, sure. they're lovely, aren't they? I love them. I think they're really pretty, yeah. and these would be the perfect combination with your Boulevard Clematis. I now really we have, will. We have got a few general questions coming through, uh, so we will answer those uh, very shortly. Joanne, uh, thank you. A uh, new viewer, I believe, has just uh, messaged in. And Jean, as well, one of our regulars. Thank you so much. Yeah, we'll do um, our best to answer any questions that come in. Yeah, we're really happy to. Hey, guess what? The clock's spring forward this weekend. Oh, yeah. So you will lose an hour's sleep, but it will You'll be light. You'll an hour of daylight. <laughs> yeah. You'll be able to sit out in the garden until 7.30 in the light, which is amazing. Wait. I can't wait either. So excited about Counting that. the hours. Right, we better move on, because we, we have got the most stunning hydrangeas coming up next. I mean, my word, when we saw these, we just fell in love with them instantly. And these are a paniculata. And I, I love hydrangeas in general, but the paniculata, that shape, that cone shape, is extraordinary. Isn't I it? think they are beautiful they because are. you get these massive, great big Look cones of these. flowers. They are densely packed as well because you've got hundreds of little flowers on there that make up this huge, great big cone of flowers. They last a long time as well. You know, they probably start flowering for you around somewhere in the summer, around July time. And they keep late going. Summer on there, aren't they? Yeah, they keep going through to sort of September, October. They look great when you leave the faded flowers on over the winter time as well. They have that interest over winter. But look at the I range mean, of colours. I haven't got this variety. It's called Diamond Rouge, but my word, I'm going to be buying these as well. Um, and we'll tell you a bit about just paniculatas in general when it comes to hydrangeas. I mean, it's fair to say all hydrangeas like to be kept moist. They don't like dry. They don't want to be water, but they don't like to dry out. <laughs> True, true story, I bought uh, a friend of mine, uh, Sue, she's in part of my garden club, I bought her hydrangea yeah. last year, and honestly, it was in a pot, she left it outside in the sun for a day. It looked amazing, I delivered it, and she was like, oh, it's most And then, next time I was like, I went, I was like, where's your hydrangea, Sue? And she'd left it out in the sun for that, and it literally just, just went. it didn't die, but all the flowers, all the leaves, happy. pretty much, with, withered away, dropped off. This The next year it was actually great again, but yeah. they do not like to dry out. Yeah, it's important. So if you are keeping it in a pot, you do need to pay that extra bit of attention and make sure you're keeping it watered. Obviously, if you plant it into a border, you still need to water well, but it's, yeah. it needs less, doesn't it, if you're, if you're in a border? Um, Pruning-wise, um, paniculatas, you can actually quite hard prune them because all the flowers are on the new growth as well. So yeah. sometimes I've, I'll be honest, sometimes I've pruned hydrangeas maybe incorrectly and I've, I've not had many flowers but these you can prune really quite hard back i think i think we should get a decent amount of flowers even in the first year though, i would you? like to think so yeah, yeah. obviously they're going to get so not, much better as they get yeah. more established and they get bigger but you can see look mm. this is the quality that we are talking about you can see those roots on there they are so ready to be planted out and just delight you all summer long every summer and it's a great transitional plant isn't it yeah. hydrangea and i know we don't want to think about the end of the summer yet because we're not even we're quite into it out. but <laughs> they're a wonderful transition plant because these will keep going for you they will keep looking amazing when all of our summer bedding and everything has started to disappear they still get, it just transitions us from spring uh, from summer into autumn as well but let's think about that later in yeah. the year yeah <laughs> and a lot of garden designers do plant in threes and you're getting three of those they are going to look spec Spectacular, they really are. I love the way that the those kind of rouges just fade into the gentle pinks. 
gorgeous. Yeah. They do start out this kind of, because you, so you can see the oh. colour mix you've got on that. I think they start the sort of creamy white and they turn to the yeah. red yeah. colour. And it is just a beautiful colour as well. And to get that mixture of colours on those paniculatas are incredible. that one, isn't it? Great as a cut flower as well. Obviously, once this gets more yeah. established and you get loads of flowers, you'll have so many on there to be able to, to cut and bring indoors as indoor displays. And as we say, hopefully we'll, you'll get a few flowers in the first year, but year two, year three, you'll just get masses. Uh, Ellen has just said she needs to repot hers. Yeah, absolutely. I'd, I'd do it now. It's a good time. Yeah, it's a really yeah. good time. Before it gets too warm. We yeah. don't want to be doing all that when it gets too warm. No. You really are the, one of the worst. I mean, you know when it's a really sunny day, you really don't want to be like moving plants around. Yeah, they around. don't like it. No. They don't like it. It's always annoying because on a sunny day you want to get out in the garden yeah. and do things like that. Like, <laughs> do not Can't do that. No, plants hate being moved in the sun, don't Weeding. they? Weeding. Weeding during the summer. Yes. That's, that's the job. Right, we're going to move on now to uh, another beautiful selection of plants. I nearly bought these last night, Did actually, you? Bex. Yeah. Well, uh, you've but, got plenty of space. Yeah, I've got one. I've got one. Uh, one but this is a section of three. So and I just, my one looks a bit lost, actually. It's yeah. In, it's in my Acacia's border with my, um, it's, I've got my camellias there, my rhododendrons, but these are, these three are beautiful colors, aren't they? They're incredible. And I think these are just, I mean, they're spectacular, aren't they? They're mm. gorgeous, evergreen shrubs. But what you get from these is the beautiful new growth that comes here, the young foliage. You get these dazzling shades of beautiful pinks and corals and reds coming through. And then they mature too, as you can see. Yeah. On, you can see on there, look, you can see how they mature. They go through these shades of kind of limey green into these more darker olive greens. There's also interest with these as well because you, what you get the oh look at that oh. just I mean as a fo it, it's mostly a foliage plant and that is absolutely incredible that picture right there tells yeah. you why you need these but you do get these lovely little branching clusters of creamy and, white bell shaped and, flowers and I think yesterday Bex you um, compared them to Lily of the yeah. Valley flowers and you're right they they're a similar type aren't they they do they look very very similar they last for a good few weeks as well I think you probably get a good sort of four to six weeks yeah. out of the flowers before they fade and then all you're going to do is prune those off just lightly you know just take those flowers off once they fade um, and then as far as pruning the actual plant is concerned there's not much you need to do maybe once every couple of years you're going to prune it gently just to shape it but other than that it's very yeah. simple to look after and they're not quick growing they're relatively slow relatively Wonder, slow I growing say, actually yeah they can get big if you want them to you know we, they can get two two and a half maybe even three meters in height but they're gonna take probably 10 years yeah. to get to that sort I of i remember size. my mum in her last garden had one that was maybe about two foot high uh, maybe three and it was lovely actually yeah, it's been there years absolutely beautiful it reminds me a bit and i think it's uh, you know it's a bit like a fetinia the fetinias are looking amazing at the moment aren't they with mm. this beautiful red foliage that comes on here so it's it's in a similar vein to that but i think you've got added interest with these ones no i've got mine in my uh, ericaceous border so mine's in a slightly acid soil yeah they much prefer yeah. being in ericaceous it is but, important with these but I haven't said that my mum's was in normal soil was last it year. Yeah, it did okay. okay yeah but I've got mine in, uh, in ericaceous compost uh, in my my acid loving border yeah well this is definitely um, one we're going to recommend you yes. put in ericaceous um, so d we've got it on the website if you need some ericaceous compost that's uh, that's easily available for you and if you're planting them into borders that aren't ericaceous it's fine you can still do that. Just dig a much bigger hole, put plenty of ericaceous compost in there, and they will live beautifully. Um, the big, um, the big tip when it comes to that is not to use tap water though, because it'll change the pH level yeah. of the soil. Try and use um, rainwater if you can. We did have a question about the hydrangea. What soil type? Just uh, it, it doesn't need um, ericaceous. It just no. just well drained. Just well drained soil. Yeah. Any 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 soil really. Yeah. But um, yeah, if you got like if if your soil is a bit poor, you might want to just mix in some of our premium professional compost. So you know, some nice organic matter. Yeah, in there. it's not like so. As often we say about roses, roses will grow in poor soil. Yeah. You know, it still wants some goodness yeah. in the soil. Um, and our premium professional is the best. Yeah. I've got I'm, my hydrangeas in, in really yeah good rich soil that, that's moist but well drained and so it mine's do really in well. clay soil. And does it alright? It's doing okay does at it? the moment. Such wood. <laughs> it's doing okay. Got plenty of wood in here, Bex. <laughs> plenty of wood. 
<laughs> it's all wood. <laughs> but uh, yeah, any questions, keep them coming in. But uh, we've got an amazing show for you today on New Garden TV. Right, we've got uh, some brand new lilies for you next. The Easter lily. Oh, perfect. Oh, it's um, beautiful. This, I, I love, I, in fact, Bex and I, um, just to let you know, we are going to be trying some new lily bulbs. We are. Yeah. We, we had some, an email, didn't yeah, we? Yeah, it's from Paul, one of our, our top buyer. And uh, yeah, we are going to be trying some lily varieties. Obviously, there's going to be a bit of competition between Obviously. us. Obviously. Uh, we, we picked some separate ones. We picked some different ones, but there's a couple, I think, that are the same. So we might yeah. just have a little competition. But we have got some great lilies. But this one has been a phenomenal top seller. And I always think a white lily is always just so beautiful, isn't it's, it? It's oh. classic. Yeah. I think, you know, that pure white that you're getting from these, those beautiful mm. trumpet flowers that you get on here. It's a florist favourite, this one. Yeah. Because you get re it's got a really vigorous flowering habit, but it has these gorgeous, sturdy stems on there as well. And it's not one lily flower per stem. You get multiple flowers on each of the stems. I mean, we're talking, once this gets established, probably somewhere between maybe four, five, up to nine flowers per stem wow. here. So it's really going to give you a lot of flower for your money. Um, it can get to about probably a metre tall. Yeah, probably about a metre tall maybe in their first year. Once they, you know, because they'll come back for you year after year, they might even get a little bit taller for you as well. But they are totally hardy, incredibly easy to grow, very reliable, but need very no, basically no maintenance other than water and feed them. I tell you what. Um, that double look deal as well when you think you can get 20 bulbs for 14 pounds and 98 pence and lilies are one of they are one of the easiest flowers to grow yes yeah, so fully simple. winter holiday so simple yeah so i had I, I did a load of lilies in pots last year um, and left them to die back and then once you know left them yeah. put them around the side of the house i brought them out the other day well what two weeks ago brought them around the front of the house into full sun i've got like this much growth coming off yeah, them yeah, already yeah. just within two weeks God, they're so simple it's a great time of year isn't it when you see things really thrive. yeah there they are really good quality really good quality yeah they're shooting these are so ready to go into the ground and they will grow so quickly it's amazing how quick lilies will grow for you you will get flowers you yeah. absolutely will get flowers this year uh, you know sort of um, into the summertime we're talking anywhere from june, june. onwards june july august you'll get some beautiful pure God. white heavenly flowers now here. some of the uh, the new viewers have been asking about the discount club yes, so we will we need go to tell you. into details like right now because you can join and get a big saving on your very first order today and all you need to decide is which membership to go for there's two basically mm -hmm. but just to give you an overview you will get 10 percent off all the plants on the show all year round You'll also get 10% off things like compost, yeah, uh, pots. You will get £20 worth of vouchers sent to you as well. Yeah, that's a really, really good, good one. So it breaks down to £5 every three months. It comes out to you in your welcome pack, so it's all there ready for you. £5 every three months, extra discount for you. Uh, and as Sean said, that 12 months membership, you get 10% every time you place an order for that 12 yeah. months. Uh, and you can join right now. So when you place an order today, there will be a little message come up uh, just telling you what you would save if you are a club member. Two minutes, so this is all we're going to do. All right, so, so we put an order there, and we have, have we put our offer code in yet? Yeah, because got there you go, the pin is in there, great. So remember, YGTV1324. Uh, uh, I think we should definitely put some oleanders in there. Totally. And they are selling really quickly at YouGarden, as you can imagine. Great reviews. And if we... Uh, Check so, that out, look. All right, two of them, 55, what, 54.98. But check this out. Once we enter this into the basket, we've already put our code there's, in. Oh, there's a free one. We get a free one. That is the beauty of yeah. shopping at YGTV. So that, that discount code can make a huge difference. And this is it. It says here, save a further £8 by joining the club. So the, the, um, the best club membership, the most popular, is the auto renewal. So it's £5 to join right now, down from £20. And then you actually make an £8 saving. So actually... You are quids in there. Quids for, just in. from joining the club today. So if you're not a club member, five pounds for the year. Now it is on what we call auto renewal, but you could cancel at the end of the twelve months. Yes. 
But that price, that five pound membership, will stay the same for the rest of your life. We, and it's a it's a one off payment. So you pay the five pounds to join the club. That's it then for the full twelve months. You're not paying anything else. When next time you place an order, you're just getting ten percent off every order that you place from then on for the next yeah. twelve months. I mean, we when we. See, we used to work on another shopping channel. We didn't even know about this club. <laughs> and then, then we joined You Garden TV and we joined it the first week. Right. We were like, hang on. We'll <laughs> Absolutely, have a, that makes yeah, sense. Yeah, we'll have a bit of that. That totally makes sense, doesn't it? Uh, uh, lots of you watching today, so thank you so much. We're going to have a great few hours together. We will try and answer as many questions as possible as well. So Joanne is thinking about getting the perennial collection. Um, and she said she's got too many weeds, so she wants to put a liner down. And a thick layer of compost and this collection. Um, what I would, what I, I think that's a great idea, but I personally, I would still cut holes I in the would. liner just so, I would, just so the roots can really get the into roots, the yeah. I mean, the layer of compost that you're going to need, I mean, depending on what you plant, some things like to go deep, so that shrub roots not tend to go out. So I would still, wherever you're planting, just put a little hole in there. It's still going to work beautifully to, to stop the yeah. majority of the weeds coming up, um, uh, but it'll just give room, room for those roots to grow. Another thing that you could invest in if you can stretch to it is maybe get some of our strolch because if you're thinking about weed suppressant you could have that liner underneath your compost and then put a layer of strolch over as well because that works brilliantly as a weed suppressant yeah. we've got that on the show i'm sure we'll, we'll but, um, feature it in a little while if you are going to go after printing correction be quick because there's less than 50 of those available yes. and you've got to bear in mind these are on our website as well. We get so many orders just going on the website on a on a you yeah, know, we hourly do basis. Share stock, um, yes, with the web orders as well as what we're doing yeah. here. So, but um, yeah. Jean, she's got a broken raspberry cane. Can, can you mend it? Do you no, know you when, can't, when, when I, 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 I've. I've thought that I've thought that myself before. I thought, oh, can I band it together? The best thing would just be to, to chop it down. You'll get some new shoots coming from the bottom. Yeah. So raspberries yeah. tend to grow. So raspberries grow on last year's canes. So that's just the important thing when you're pruning raspberry canes. You don't want to prune the new ones. But if it's broken, prune it, even if it's last year's or this yeah. year's. I wonder, I wonder which raspberry cane she's got there, because yeah. there might be some of them do. If it's the autumn bliss. That will fruit this year. You can chop it back in it because that fruit's on the new Is growth. Is that fruiting on the new yeah. growth? Yeah. So if it's the autumn bliss, do not worry. Chop that cane down and get the new sh the new shoots will come and it yeah. should you should get some fruit on the new growth. Yeah, it does depend yes. on the variety. Yeah. But if it's autumn bliss, that yeah, that fruits. I don't know that one, so I'll take your word for that. I I had it on a. Did you have it on QVC? Yeah. So That's I know why the he knows. Bliss. You see. We don't always sell the same because because we work over two channels. Yeah, sometimes you may, there's something you know loads about, and I'm like, oh, I'm not sure about that one, and vice versa. Um, good morning to Alwyn, by the way. Good morning, morning. Alwyn. How are you doing? And I know it's, I've, I know you've had a really bad time recently, Alwyn. So we have been thinking. Of we you. are thinking of you, absolutely. And All right, Brenda would like what a memory rose. Tom, Tommy, or Thomas? Okay, so the only one we know of is the Captain Tom. Yeah. If you go to roses.co.uk, you can buy it there. Is there a code or anything that she needs to, or should she just type in, just type in Tom, and it okay. will come up for you. We have Stu, got sorry, it sounds like I'm going mad, doesn't it? If you're wondering, <laughs> Stu talks to us. We have these earpieces in, uh, and he's in the control room really? just outside I here. I think everyone needs to see Stu. <laughs> On our anniversary show, apparently he's going to put a camera That'd in great, there. That'd be great because we talk about Stu. We and do they... talk about Stu a lot, don't we? Yeah, but um, <laughs> he has just made an online video show which shows how easy it is to watch on um, on your big TV. Basically, if you've got a smart TV, I know most of you are watching on TV, but some of you were watching on phones and tablets. But if you've got a smart TV uh, with the YouTube app, YouTube app rather, you can watch us on your big telly. Uh, we have got a video coming up where you get to see Stu explaining all that as well. Absolutely. Yes. But, um, well, if you're going for the perennial collection, be super quick. They are going. And then also, these Eclipse, <laughs> these are not coming back, are they? No, these are on Rundown as well, which is such a shame. But listen, we will replace them with other things. But 
when something is on rundown, it does mean that we get a great price. Basically, yeah. it's on sale. So yeah. you can get a really good price on these. We're clearing them, we're getting rid of them. You can get two of them for £14.98. That's £7.50 each. If you're in the club, you'll get an extra 10% discount off that as well. Cool. And then also, we yeah. have got the amazing tower pots. Oh, my now, fave. I've got to say, I'm going to let you talk about this because I mean I love them too. Don't get me wrong, but Bex has got four of these. I've got four you? of them right now. Uh, <laughs> and you got sweet peas in two of them, haven't you? Yeah. Well, I had planned to put sweet peas in one of them, and I was going to use the other for my flame lily once it starts to to grow. But what I discovered was that I've got loads and loads of sweet peas. So I've actually filled two of these tower pots with sweet peas. I've got wisteria in one, and I've got jasmine. Ah, <laughs> yes. <laughs> I've got Jasmine um, in the other one. Um, and I think they are, I just think it's such a clever, clever system because they are freestanding. They're made of plastic. They're super lightweight. They're easy for you to move around the garden. You get a beautiful 360 degree display on these. Whereas sometimes with a climbing plant, you know, if it's going up, it's, it's just too, you're just looking at it flat yeah. on. This, you can get that lovely 3D display. I just think it's an awesome yeah. thing. If they I want to move it, if something's going over, if it doesn't look great, I can hide it. If it looks great, I can bring it out front and centre. I mean, I know with your sweet peas, when they are really looking their best, you will have that pride of place, It'll won't you? It'll be right um, out there on the patio for everyone to see. And Jeff, for many years, I've grown pots and put a bit of trellis in, but if it's wooden trellis, it always falls to pieces after a few years. It yeah. always rots, doesn't it? So if it was my jasmine and my wisteria, that's going to be really annoying because they're long lasting. They're going to be there year after year. Not so much of a problem if you're growing your sweet peas, but it's just annoying this has been designed yeah. to last for many many and, years and the price that we've got today on that double up deal is extraordinary you can get two of these for 39 pounds and 98 pence that's bex's with her wisteria falls there as well um i'm going to be graying i just got the black-eyed susan yesterday oh, some birds, yeah, love that. yeah. And I've got, I've got, I got the uh, the six pack yesterday. These would be that would be amazing in yeah. the tower Can planter because they're really vigorous. When I said I got the six pack yesterday, I don't, I don't have a six pack. I bought <laughs> a six pack of plants. I have been, I have been exercising a bit recently though. <laughs> And I've been doing uh, lots of gardening, so that's my gardening move. My son keeps coming in, going like, "Have I got a six pack?" I'm like, "Babe, no, you're just skinny." <laughs> it's very cute though. He's like, he's like, look. Look, I've got a muscle vein. I've got a muscle vein. It's all about the muscle veins. I don't, what, I don't know what it is. Anyway, uh. this is how it comes to you, by the way. So it comes to you in the four sections. So you've got the pot, and then you've got the three trellis sections here. And these just clip together. Can you see these clips yes. around here? So these just clip onto each other. It's really quick and easy to do. It also means that if you want to, like with my sweet peas, for example, because obviously they'll be gone after the summer, I can then dismantle it and I can then store it away really yeah. easily or just use the pot for winter bedding yeah could just then use the pot because they're not to. that not that many sort of evergreen climbers in, in the winter time so yeah could just use the pot in the winter as well right double up on that one really popular as ever 39.98 that is for two one three zero four six one what's everybody's favorite item? i'm going to say it's the oleander it is got to be is the it the oleander surely. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, Should we take them over with us? Yeah, go on. So for those of you that have just joined us, uh, brand new offer this week, and it is a buy one, get one free. Oleanders are so hard to get hold of in the UK. We're not going to bore you with the details, but there's a lot of really difficult sort of administration processes that go through, that these plants go through. You know all about plant passports and things like that. Yeah. So, it's hard to bring stuff in yeah, to cross borders really with plants, obviously. You it's, know. Well, it's getting hard for us now, isn't it? <laughs> it's getting hard. Yeah. It was all on the news the other day, wasn't it? You've got to have certain lengths on your passport. Oh, it's, yeah, honestly, it's not easy to travel. And it's not easy for these plants to travel. But these are bred in Sicily by what we believe to be the top breeder in the world. Family business, decades of experience. And although Peter McDermott, his our head gardener he has worked with oleanders and other suppliers for many years this breeder he firmly believes produces the best oleanders in the world and you can actually see that we've been out bex and i have been out in the nursery yeah. the last few days there are hundreds of these pink oleanders lined up and they look amazing they all they? look amazing they're all very uniform in size and shape yeah. and that's really important to let you know because what we're showing you here is very indicative of what you yeah. are going to receive um and just to go back to the to the breeder there is a wait list to get there and, and peter yeah. 
we wanted took, to work with this I particular we, breeder. Was it two years we had to wait? Two there? years we yeah. had to wait to get on there, and apparently there's now a ten-year waiting list to get mm. to work with this breeder. So it's really important that you understand the the kind of quality and where these come from. And, and I believe our order was, I think it was about ten thousand oleanders. Yeah. And they are really flying. So we'll tell you a bit about the plant. So you will have seen oleanders if you've traveled uh, around the Mediterranean, France, Spain, Italy. I saw some big, big, huge ones in America actually as well. So they are a Mediterranean plant. They are hardy. The great news is, you might be saying, oh, it won't grow in the UK. <laughs> They're actually hardy to minus five yeah. in the UK. They're super easy great. to look after. I mean, ideal if you do keep them in a pot, because if you do live in, in areas of the country where it does get just that little bit colder, it's much easier to fleece and protect a plant that's been kept in a pot. Yeah. But also it's quite easy to do it when it's in a border as well. You know, good layer of strulch, uh, uh, um, uh, horticultural fleece, those sorts of things. My mum's got one of these and she absolutely adores Does it. She? Yeah, she loves my, it. My mum did have some, but uh, she moved home a few years ago. So she's uh, she's got some more uh, this week, as it happens. So fully evergreen, gorgeous foliage. The flowers are incredible. And you get, I mean, you can see here, look how many buds yeah. are about to open. And as the summer progresses, we say these normally flower from about May to even November, but each one of these stems will be covered in buds and flowers. And in a pot, I mean, in, in their native countries, they can grow several metres high. But in a pot in the UK, they probably only grow to about a metre by metre after several years. But they're absolutely beautiful. A few things you do need to uh, bear in mind with an oleander, you cannot eat any part of it. And that applies to humans and all pets as well. Yeah, and it's very similar to a lot of the things that we have in our garden. So just uh, exercise a bit of caution. Wear gloves when you're pruning, just so that the sap, because it can irritate. Yeah. But in the most part, very, very simple. And, and, and the kind and so, of thing that you do with a lot of other plants in your garden. Yeah. And I, I, I mean, there's a place I go to and spend a, a little uh, place called Sitches and by there's a, a lovely uh, marina and they've just got rows of huge oleanders. And do you know, I've been there probably every month of the year at some point and they've always seemed to be in flower there. Oh, it's yeah. amazing. Very, I mean, obviously well, they, look, they, they look better in the summer, but even in the winter over in even Spain. Even here, they are going to be long flowering. Yeah, you know, they keep they going all the way through the summer. Um, I would grab them today because we've, we've just started this off at buy one get one free now in honesty an oleander doesn't need anything around it because when this is established it would just be a massive thing however because these are not in flower yet in buds our lovely craig who helps us with all of our plants in the studio and our potting shed i should say he just potted these up and they look gorgeous so you can obviously put winter bedding summer bedding all the way around them but as they get more established chances are you won't need anything at all actually no but amazing value on those, cannot emphasize it enough. Postage, don't forget, six ninety nine per order. But what I would do, if you buy the oleanders, spend another £10 and a couple of pence, and you'll get free delivery. Yeah, so, it's well worth yeah. doing. And I think we're in that part of the year now, aren't we, where those orders um, are getting Begin slightly larger, yeah. replacing a few more orders for things. And one thing that you can add to your basket that will never go to waste, that will always get used and will help you to get over your 40 pounds is our premium professional compost. Yeah. It's uh one of the best composts out there. One of the best becks, excuse it's me. It's the best compost That's more like there. it. <laughs> I had gone about watches like, wait, well, one of the best. God, uh, I'm in trouble. So yeah. sorry. No, it, it, we, well, <laughs> we know it's the best. We uh, do. I mean, it's the compost that we use personally in our gardens, in your pub garden, in your mum's garden. It's also the compost that we use here at the nursery. And our business is growing plants. We um, are not going to grow it in anything inferior. A friend of mine bought this for the first time the other day in the village, Lynn, and I'm going to tell you, she actually said to me, she was, oh, I'm not sure about this compost. I was like, hang on, Lynn. You should, honestly, you should have seen my face. Hang on. I was like this. I was like, what? <laughs> hang on, Lynn. Um, I could I just said, see that as well. Oh, honestly, I was horrified. But Lynn says it as it is. I said, hang on, Lynn. I said, could you actually let me know how the compost is when you've grown something in it? <laughs> I did. I said, so, I said, Lynn, do an experiment, grow, if you've got several of the same plant, grow half in your normal compost, half in hours, then let me know. Yeah, then come back. You can tell I was angry. So but, many people have done that, by the way. Yeah. I was just about, I mean, I, I don't know how Lynn could say, I know, sorry, Lynn, if you want to, but, um, <laughs> but it is an amazing compost. And 
you might be thinking, all right, you use it in your garden, Sean, Bex, you do. But most importantly, it is a compost that we use at the nursery and we pot up and plant tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands of plants on a regular basis. So all of our pre-made hanging baskets that we'll have shortly all the plants growing in here. All of our bare roses. I think we planted up 150,000 this so year. So many. Uh, and that was just you, Bex. <laughs> I'd love to do that job, actually. I think I'd enjoy that. I'd enjoy that. I think I'd really enjoy that. Yeah. Just putting things up. Yeah. Get your hands in. I got home from work last night and I, I, and, uh, I went straight in the greenhouse and I had some plants. But, and I loved it. Yeah, it's so much fun, isn't like, it? Like, normally when you finish work, you're like, oh, well, I'll sit down, have a coffee and a cake or whatever. But no, I got in the greenhouse. I loved it. I was so happy. Anyway, let's talk about the compost, yeah? <laughs> yeah, let's do it. So in here, we've got some amazing ingredients and this uh, this formula has been perfected over the years to make just the best nutrients for your plants okay so what we've got in here we've got different types of peat now there is renewable peat in here sphagnum moss peat that is renewable we have a couple of other types of peat in here but what we do with those is we use the minimum amount because environmental issues minimum amount for maximum um, results here so it's a reduced peat content we've also got this composted wood fiber there's a little bit here but it's it's kind of well spaced throughout the the, the compost itself and that has a really um, important job it gives it this lovely lovely light yeah. and it, this is the difference I think when you open a bag of this compost and you feel it the texture of oh, it it's, it's soft it's, it's light it's it? airy and that is really important when it comes to root development and growth well, it just means those roots can access all the nutrients they need and all the oxygen and all the water but I, that's what I, I every time I open up a bag it's I, soft yeah and it's it's even you, you don't get like big lumps and clumps and chunks and bit, bits of stick that haven't been composted down. But look at it, it's, it's amazing in terms of texture. Yeah, it's really fine texture here. So what we say is seeds through to trees, this is perfect for, but as I'm showing you as I do that, can you see how fine that is? So if you are planting seeds, for example, some, some just need a light mm. covering of compost over the top, you've got that with this. It doesn't, it, it's not solid, you know those tiny little seedlings and they've got to break through. Sometimes it can be really hard, but okay. not with this because it's so Occasionally soft Occasionally we, we run out of this and you, you know, you're in the middle of gardening, so you have to, run to well not run but you know drive to the, the uh, local garden center or the big diy store or whatever but honestly whenever i've done that i did the last bag of compost that i bought that wasn't you garden one it was quite a few months ago <coughs> so i'm a bit more organized now but i opened up and it was like black it was so dank and it didn't smell that great it was heavy yeah not good at all but i must have opened up Oh, got hundreds of bags of this over the years, if not thousands, and it's always just the most wonderful smell, texture, price. Now, we're not going to claim we're the cheapest. However, the value today is extraordinary. First of all, $24.98 postage included, so it's delivered straight to your door for free. But if you're a club member, most of you are, you actually get a £2.50 saving every time you order this. So the price is only $22.48 for 100 litres. Then you've got to bear in mind, with every separate order today, you're going to get this gorgeous Sarah Bernhardt peony, which, is, which we sell for $9.99. We, we, we sold this many times, actually, yeah, uh, we did. for $9.99. Absolutely, $9.99. It's one of the most popular peonies that we yeah. bring in actual fact, and, but it's a free gift today. And even the double up off, if I remember right, was $14.98 for mm -hmm. two. So that will be free with your order today. So actually, if you take off the value of that £10 off your club price, you're suddenly getting the compost for $12.98 for 100 <laughs> litres. So that, when you when you work out the value of that, are you all right, Bex? What's this? I was falling for you, Sean. Oh. <laughs> That'd be first. Uh, <laughs> but uh, the value actually is really good. It really, really, really is. With that free gift worth £10, it's really good. By the way, the, um, the peony free gift, that's only for this week. It, it changes next week. Got a new free gift on Wednesday. Oh, my God. <laughs> Don't worry about me, Bex. Uh, so, uh, remember, 100 litres. The one thing I don't think Bex mentioned about the wetting agent in here as well is a lovely um, component called the wetting agent. What that actually does, I think we've all allowed um, hanging baskets, pots sometimes to dry out. You know, on a really hot summer's day, you go out for the day, you come back, and your hanging basket is all dried out. And then you try to water, and all the water goes over the side. This has got a wetting agent, which makes the water stick to the compost. It rehydrates it really quickly. All right? Yeah, I'm fine, thanks. Good. Just had a moment. I could see. <laughs> Falling, sneezing, <laughs> bless you. Uh, but do get that today. And remember, if you spend 
over £40, you will get free postage. If, you get, you know, if you're buying a few plants today, get some compost as well, and that will take your order to over £40. Should we go to the Sahara? Oh, I'd love to. Actually, no, it'd be too hot for me. <laughs> Don't know. My ginger beard and skin. No, the Sahara, <laughs> it'd kill me. Um, but we have got uh, some wonderful begonias called Sahara right now. And we do actually different sizes of plug plants here at U Garden. Mm. We've, we've got jumbo plugs, we've got garden ready, uh, but the most affordable are what we call our pro plugs, and that's what we've got right now. And you actually get 40 of these for 14.99, and each one of these will grow into begonia about 25 by 25 centimeters. So when you actually picture 40 of these yeah. in the summer, they are going to be amazing, Bex, aren't they? They really are going to be amazing, and and amazing because these are going to flower for you for such a long time as well. We are talking a long flowering season all the way through the summer. They'll probably start throwing up flowers for you. <coughs> Excuse me, and around May time. And they're going to keep going right the way through to the first frost. We're talking October, maybe even into November, depending on where you are in the country and when the frosts come. It's such a brilliant plant to have because they're also summer weather tolerant as yeah. well. And this is a brilliant thing about begonias in general. They are tolerant of all the different types yeah. of summer weather and, that and, we can get. And I think with climate change, I mean, sometimes you get four seasons in a day. So to have some plants in your garden that you know are going to do great no matter what summer we get i think is really important and that's why these are often used in commercial displays you'll see them at roundabouts just covered in these begonias so a lot of the you know the local councils use begonias as part of the displays in, mm. in towns and and shopping centers outside and things like that because of their weather resistance because they're easy uh, they don't mind full sun they'll bake in full sun and love it but shade they're okay in part shade yeah. Yeah, well. they're, they're fine in a bit of part shade yeah. too. You get lovely, stunning shades of flowers in there. But what I really like about this, I mean, in fact, all begonias, to be honest with you, it's the, it's the contrast between the flowers and the foliage. Yeah. Some plants, you're just growing them for the flowers, and that's great. But this one, actually, you get lovely bronzy foliage. You get lovely lime green foliage, and it all contrasts and blends really beautifully together. And I just love those, I mean, those perfectly placed little yellow dots in the center. They just really illuminate oh. the plant. And I actually, um, last year, these two big wooden planters, at, um, some of you know, me and my other half have, have got a, I've got a pub. Uh, we actually own the pub in our village, and um, it's great fun, actually. Mm. Get some right characters. <laughs> I'll tell you about them later. Um, <laughs> actually, I'm, go I'm going out with what they call it, so tonight, so I'm, I'm going on a bit of a tangent, but tonight, I'm going out with a bunch of guys called, and they call themselves the Monday Night Club. Right, yeah. Because they're always around the bar on a Monday night, but actually they're there every night of the week. <laughs> so it's not it's like the Tuesday Night Club, the Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, but we'll get out for curry, but it is funny. It's like, it's quite old school. We'll sit there and all talk about the wives, the girlfriends. Like, it's great. Um, why have we talked about this? I know why. Because <laughs> <laughs> they are such a great laugh, honestly. That. But the reason I'm talking about our pub is because we've got two big wooden planters at the front. And I planted both of them last year just with these begonias. Yeah. And do you know what? I barely looked at them all. So when I say looked at them, I, I, I didn't, I wasn't every day going like, oh, we've got to do this, got to do that. You know, I watered them when I remembered, I fed them when I remembered, but they looked after themselves and they look really good. Yeah, really th good. this is the beautiful thing. And we were talking yesterday, weren't we, about, you know, you need certain plants in your garden that don't need that attention. Of yeah. course, we want some plants that, yeah, we want to mollycoddle and look after because we want to be out in our gardens. But if everything in your garden needed that much attention, oh. you, you it dread becomes going a labor into your doesn't garden. It? You would dread it. Um, we better tell you what you need to do with these when you get them home. So they arrive, all of our packaging is 100% recyclable. So they arrive in a box like this. And actually, they'll be in there in a certain way so they won't be able to move around. It'll be yeah, quite a nice... Yeah, they're wedged into yeah. place, aren't There's they? There's like little tabs in the side. Yeah, so you it, can see them. These little tabs there, that's what holds the, the, um, the tray in place so it doesn't like wobble yeah. about while it's being transported. And then what you really want to do is carefully take each one of these out. <laughs> <laughs> this is just dropping on. Oh, Carefully take it out, Sean. It's fine. It'll it's be fine. fine. It'll be fine. Um, what I tend to do, I mean, you squeeze yours out. I'm I a do. Bit, I'm a bit more sort of like clumsy than Bex, as you see. So I tend to get a little stick and just push from the bottom, and then that just 
brings them out really easy because obviously you've got to be a little bit careful and you don't want to be pulling too much at the leaves give them a little water they may be slightly dry after their little journey they might need a little drink a bit, a bit of a light refreshment so give them a a little water i just i just place those in a very shallow saucer wouldn't you yeah because obviously there's the holes in the bottom so they can draw up the moisture that they need leave them there for you know half an hour or an hour just let them have a little drink and settle after their journey and it's then a bit like you. you need a cup of tea when yeah. you've had your long journey and then um, just and then you can take them and plant them now you could either use something like a windowsill propagator kit which is brilliant or you could put that straight in a, in a nine centimeter pot or something like that yeah, yeah but absolutely. um you'd be amazed at this time of year i've got loads of, of pro plugs in my greenhouse right now and do you know what they're doubling in size at yeah. least a, on a weekly basis i'd say more so actually they grow very quickly yeah. once you start growing them on obviously keep them under cover until the frosts have passed and then once the frosts have passed plant them out at your leisure but do you know it's, it's not just about saving money it's the enjoyment it's the journey <coughs> it's the fun that you get I, I i love buying small plug plants and and seeing them go into these gorgeous big beautiful yeah, plants it's, it's a great thing yeah. to do isn't it now the most popular bedding plant that yesterday were the busy lizzies and these are really special aren't they? these Ooh. are super special we love busy lizzies don't we here because they're really busy you get loads of flowers that's why they're called busy yeah. lizzies you get loads and loads of flowers from them but these are special i think because you've got like the, the flowers that appear they're like miniature roses you've got petalicious blooms on yeah, here I like word. loads and loads is that a real word no we made no, it up was it me or was it joe I, I think it was Joe. Was it? When Joe was I filling like in for it. you, I think he made that word up. I was, <laughs> I, it's petalicious. You get so many petals on them. Word. And they are like beautiful little roses that mm. you have on here. Another one that is a long flowering season. We are talking again, probably June time all the way through to those first frosts, right the way through to October. And if you're worried about... If you remember that downy mildew that affected busy Lizzie's. Yeah, they, they it's probably disappeared about overnight. eight, nine years ago now, isn't it? Yeah, it was a fair while ago. It was a while ago, but obviously we often think about these diseases and things. These have been bred to be resistant to that, so you don't have that worry with these particular ones. Um, when you think about a lot, lot, let's be honest, in the height of summer, the supermarkets will be full of bedding plants. Yes. But it's always all the, I don't want to say boring, but it's... Quite often, you, you get busy lizards, but it's the, the common ones. Yeah. These are a lot more rare. They are really well, beautiful. Well, I think people will look at these and, and actually wonder what they are. Yeah, I totally which agree. Which I quite like. You know, they don't look like a tradi traditional busy no. lizzie. As you said, they're like mini people little rosebuds. People look at it and say, I don't, what, what is that flower? Yeah. And I, I like that. I like it when people ask me questions about my garden. I do. And I, I love it. I, I, I love... <laughs> I love to impress with my garden, I do. Yeah, we all too. do. Yeah, of course we do. Yeah. Um, so really easy to grow. Busy lizards do pretty well in shade as well. Indeed, I've, yeah. I've grown them in, in fairly, fairly uh, deep shade and they've still done, done rather nicely. Um, they look after themselves, but they are busy. I do think with busy lizards, you do need to keep on top of the watering and the feeding. And they arrive in our mini greenhouse. They're all labelled as well, because you've got three different colours in here, but they're all labelled, aren't they? Yeah, so on the front of the package here, there is the label. Down the side, we have um, the letters. So the letters A, B, C, D, E, F, they relate to those letters that you can see along the front of the packaging. So if you want to know which colour is which, that's how you work it out. It might be important to you when you're planting, you might be doing a particular planting scheme. You might not mind, you might want to mix them all up together. It's entirely up to you, but we do label them so that you have that information. Oh, so I'm, do you know what? I'm definitely buying those, but I, I, uh, the double up deal is uh, really good actually. Two two lots of those for fourteen ninety eight. I'm definitely going to have some. I'll be honest, I'm not going to put them in the pub garden though. They. <laughs> oh, you nearly did it, didn't you? I did nearly say they're too good. That's awful. <laughs> I don't want really that. <laughs> Shame on me. No, do you know what? I'm actually going to grow some on for my mum because I think she'd really, I know she'd love those. She would love those. And they're nice bright colours for her yeah, as well, aren't they? Yeah, but my mum loves feminine, really pretty plants and she'll adore those. So that's all right. So they're too good. good so it's all right. So they're too good for the pub, but good enough for my mum. Yeah, totally. That's all right. That's all right. Yeah, I've you win points with your mum. Right. What's coming up next, Bex? You're going to get a few more plants out, aren't you? I'm going to get some more plants out. What have we got coming up next? I can't even remember. Oh, we got the one you ordered yesterday, Euphorbia. That's coming up, and it is a top, top yeah. tip. Yeah, it's called Absolutely Miner's Merlot, isn't it? I love this particular yeah. Euphorbia. It's one of my favourites. I have it in my garden. It's beautiful. So that's coming up. Stick around for that one. Cool.
Uh, but we need to talk about Calabacoa next. And uh, these are, I know these are, I call these mini petunias, but yeah. these are doubles, aren't these they? These are the doubles, yeah. And again, you wouldn't look at these and go, that's a petunia. Because no, these have got those beautiful double flowers. You've got the gorgeous bicolor. I mean, look at that one. Look at that beautiful bicolored bloom that you've got on here. This is amazing. I, I think these are super, super interesting. They're bright, they're vibrant. You'll get loads and loads of flowers on them. June right the way through to October. You know, they are free flowering. You, you, you might want to deadhead a little bit. And I love that job of deadheading, you know, petunias and calibrico. It's very, very easy to do. Um, they're just simple. They're bright and they're vibrant and they're really, really easy to look after. They do want a decent amount of sunshine, though. We are talking six hours minimum. I mean, that's an extraordinary. And I, I do love petunias, but again, these are just so much more beautiful and refined than your traditional petunia because they are they are doubles. You've got the bicolours as well. They're slightly smaller flowers, as we said, compared to a traditional petunia. Yeah. They are... I think they're just perfect for, for pots and hanging baskets. They absolutely are, but they are hungry. This is the only um, thing you need to be aware of. And we all need to get better, I think, at feeding up. Well, I say that. I need to get better at feeding over the... I don't do it regularly enough. And these are ones it's, that do need to be regularly It's always like fed. the last job on the list, isn't it, I was saying. <laughs> so, yeah, you do your watering first of all, cause I, especially if it's hot, it's like, oh, I've got to give everything water. Then you might do a bit of deadheading and tidying up. But you, the feed, feeding is always the last thing I do, but it's so important. It really is and, we have our best um, feed that we've got. It's called Blooming Fast. It's extraordinary. You might have got it as a free gift a few weeks ago. We gave it away as a <coughs> I was little, just seeing um, if we had a bag around, but I can't. Oh, it's right over there. No. Um, Philip's arrived yesterday, I believe. Uh, but if you did get the, the sachet, it will make 20 watering cans. And it's really high in your nitrogen, uh, your potassium, your phosphorus, so your NPK. Uh, and all your trace elements are in there as well. Yeah, and that's what you're looking for on the website. Just type in Blooming yeah. Fast. We have various different sizes, packages and things as well. It's well worth getting hold of that because now is the time to start feeding isn't it yes i am but it's got really high as i say npk yeah, nitrogen phosphorus and potassium but everything else is in there as well and that is good that's good for everything actually yeah yeah it really is absolutely even house plants you, 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 you yeah 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 i didn't finish my sentence yeah 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 uh, good but um <laughs> what i would say with the calabacoa because let's be honest, they're, they're not the most full of bedding plant we do because they are so extraordinary and rare and well-bred. But I just think even one of those or two of those in a hanging basket with some more traditional plants. Yeah. It just brightens and, and makes the whole thing look a little bit more exciting. I like those ones where you get the trailing kind of um, ivy coming out of the hanging baskets and then you've got the beautiful flowers up yeah. at the top. That will work really nicely together. But even, I've, you know, I've placed these with like white lobelia and geraniums and stuff. They're just just one or two of these in a basket makes it look magical. Yeah, uh, 401563. Right, we urgently need to remind you of our oleanders. Yes, please. Oh, we are excited about this. One of the, we, we, we love being here at you Garden, you know. It's, 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 it's amazing. Amazing, and I mean, for me personally, like, at my time in life, because I'm not as young as I used to be, uh, to, to get like a, a chance of working in a nursery a, 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 and, and being here with you, love people, working with Bex. And, and Bex, I mean, you, you got into gardening a little bit later on in life. I but did. My yeah. word, it, it is now just your. Apps. It's your life, isn't I it? I love you know? it. I really love it. And I'm so sorry, Mum. I'm so sorry, Nan. Um, they desperately tried to get me into gardening. <laughs> Maybe they tried too hard. Maybe. Mum and Nan, yeah. they, they love being out in their garden. I absolutely adore it. So I've been around it. I just, it never just never ignited the passion in me but it has now and i genuinely yeah. love it do you know so it's really sad sometimes as a, as a child if you if my dad really pushed me into sport and i just rejected it completely yeah. now i actually quite like sport for me <laughs> yeah. sorry dad as well but you know it was like but it was so like forced me to go to every football match when it's yeah. freezing cold and i think i just said no no i don't want to because you know you know as a child like, no not gonna. Uh, but now it's weird but i just quite like i, I, I mean the joy it, of you know. growing something and, and you, you and i are a bit alike I can't we? We like taking a kind of straggly, sick looking plant and nursing it yeah. back to health. Yeah. I love doing yeah. that. Yeah, or buying a, really a, exciting about a that. little plant and growing it on. But you know, sometimes you just want something that looks good right now. And these oleanders, they look good right now. Yeah, they uh, do they look really at that. do. So, just to recap, it's a brand new offer buy one, get one free. We work with the top breeders in the world. On our website, two of these are £55. On you Garden TV right now, you can grab a pair for £26.99. Just use the code YGTV1324. Uh, right, we, we, I know we have to be quick, but in a nutshell. Evergreen. Yes. Hardy down to minus five. Sweet fragrance, beautiful flowers. Um, and <laughs> there you go. <laughs> 
But um, re repeat flying, as Beck said. Um, yeah. What I will say with, with oleanders, in their natural countries, uh, when you see them in hot countries, like France, Spain, Italy, America, they grow huge. In the UK, in a pot, they like to go by one by one meters. So not gonna grow too big. But really easy to look after yeah. as well, like very little work from well, you. Well, we often the, the expression we often use is they thrive on, on neglect. neglect, and we often use that, and that that is so true. You know, some plants you 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 don't water them for for a day, you don't deadhead them, and they just go right. I've had enough of you, and they really suffer. You could go on a, a holiday, come back two weeks, even three, four weeks later, chances are these will be absolutely fine. Because yeah. in, in Spain, they might not get a drop, you know, these will grow by the roadside, say, in Spain, and they might not get a drop of water for weeks. So they thrive on neglect, but you do need to put them in full sun. They do, imagine where they, they grow naturally, they want full sun and well-drained. Do not put them, I mean, Bex, you've got clay soil. You would not put one of these in I would in your never pot. No. put these in there. No, no, absolutely not. If I was growing them myself, I'd be putting them into pots. Yes. For sure. So just bear that. That's the only rule. Sun and well-drained. That is it. Yeah. Um, and also, don't forget, you cannot eat any part of the oleander. That applies to humans and pets. That Indeed. is Indeed. But they are well worth getting hold of. You can see why these have been one of our most popular, both today yeah. and yesterday as well. Hello to Nicola, who has just joined us. Thank you so much for joining us. Yes, good morning. Right, Bex is going to get some more exciting plants out, including the uh, Euphorbia. Miner's Merlot Euphorbia. See, I sometimes, I forget the odd name, but I always remember that one because of the name the Merlot. Merlot. I always remember that one. Right, let's remind you of some of the things we've seen so far this morning. Uh, right, so this is a lovely little bay tree. And I say little, it's about 30 centimetres tall, so it's already a good size, but it's the most affordable bay I think we've ever had on the show. Now, bay tree is fully evergreen really nice looking leaves um, but those leaves of course smell delightful and can be used in cooking do you know i'm ashamed to say i've actually bought bay leaves before from a supermarket spent about a pound 50 on a packet why would you when you can actually have a, a little bay tree outside that you can enjoy those leaves month after month year after year fully evergreen easy to grow and that's only seven pounds and 99 pence don't forget by the way postage is 6.99 per order, not per item. And if you get over 40 pounds, uh, you will actually get free postage. Then we brought you the Boulevard Patio Clematis collection. Three gorgeous colors on this one. You've got red, you've got a gorgeous kind of lilac-y color. So like a, a lilac-y pink, and you've got the, I think that's a gorgeous bluey purple, don't you? Oh, stunning. So this is a more compact variety of Clematis. It's not gonna go huge. It's, um, my mum's got these and they, they never get more than about two foot. I mean, maybe, maybe it's got to about two and a half, that is about it. But they repeat flower. You're gonna start getting the flowers, sort of May, June, depending on what kind of a summer we have. But the great thing is, unlike lots of other varieties, these tend to flower all summer long. They'll go in fits and starts, but you can get flowers all the way through the summer, year after year. Just cut them back about this kind of time. Um, Maybe a little bit earlier, actually. February's a good time. We can still chop them back now and they'll come back each year beautifully. Now, we also have got some really nice planters to grow them in. Um, and the reason why we're suggesting the Eclipse ones is because of the size of these. They're 60 centimetres. That clematis would very happily live in that pot and climb up there. But these are not coming back when they're gone, they're gone. And it is a double up deal. Two of those, £14.98. Um, but if you want a bigger pot, we have got the tower pot. Now, we'll be honest, this would probably be too big for those clematis, it would be, uh, but great for other things like your sweet peas. That's the Wisteria Falls, that's on our website, that's uh, Beck's very own Wisteria. Um, put all three of those clematis in there and it would work. Yeah, it would. I mean, it wouldn't maybe quite get to the top, but it might do. Yeah, it would actually. You might, yeah, that'd work. That'd be a little bit nice together, wouldn't they? Yeah, no, okay, Bex. I'll give you that one. <laughs> but they are on a double up deal as well. Uh, 130461. That's our plant, I think. I'm going to say it's, it's, it's Bex's favourite product, I reckon, of all time. Right, I am going to be buying these. Uh, the hydrangea, paniculata, diamonds, rouge. I, I mean, I love my hydrangeas. But you know, when I was a child, I only remember, I only remember like the mop head hydrangeas, and I only ever remember me like 
pink, white and blue. But um, there are so many extraordinary varieties of hydrangeas now. I mean, the breeders have done amazing jobs and this is one of them. So you, you've got colour changing flowers on this one, um, creamy colours pinks, I mean, just delightful. And with it being a paniculata, these are the kind of like ice cream cone shaped, and they're really big, these flowers. And I tell you what, when these get established, you'll have so many flowers, you might even bring some inside and have them as cut flowers. Hydrangeas can look amazing in a vase as well. Uh, they love obviously to be in moist soil, good soil as well. So if your soil's poor, then do mix in some organic matter. Some of our premium professional compost would be ideal and they will flower year after year after year. And you don't have to worry about pruning. People have said, oh, why would I prune a hydrangea? Paniculatas, you can actually prune them quite hard back if they get too big, because all the flowers are on new growth. Five to one, four to one for that uh, diamond and rouge there. Then we brought you, oh, I love these. I mean, lilies are delightful, but the white heaven, oh, it's just stunning. There's something very, I think serene and tasteful and calming about white lilies. And you're actually gonna get 10 bulbs, they're all gonna flower this year. You get multiple flowers on each stem and they come back year after year after year. Lilies very hardy, uh, generally speaking, in the UK. And the doublet deal means, I mean, imagine you're gonna get, you're gonna get 20 stems absolutely covered in these delightful flowers. And if you are a club member, yeah, 8 99 is your discount club price. If you're doubling up, you get two lots for around about £13.50. Give or take a couple of pennies there. 650-019. Then we have the Pyrrhus collection. Now, you do get you do get flowers with, with Pyrrhus, little white uh, tubular kind of flowers. But actually, this is all, to me, really about the, the gorgeous foliage. You've got forest flame, you've got flaming silver and mountain fires. Well, there's the flowers. The flowers are nice, don't get me wrong, but the foliage is extraordinary. Now, they do like an acid soil, so if you grow those in pots, I would recommend an ericaceous compost. It's on our website. If you grow them amongst... I mean, my mum, look, she had one of these growing in a border. And I don't think it went anywhere near some ericaceous compost, but um, that's what we would recommend with those as well. But uh, do keep the, um, the emails and the questions coming in. Fat Bex, I think we've got some um, emails coming in. Oh, lovely. Mm. I love the emails. I love the questions. I love the pictures. Let's hear them from them all. Come on, who's first then? Oh, Alwyn. Hello, Alwyn. Alwyn sent us some pictures. Oh, she hasn't told. <laughs> Well, let's have a look at Alwyn's garden. She told us what they are, so we're going to try and During guess During that show the through the keyhole. Yes. Um, you have to guess whose house. Yeah. Who would live in a house like this? That's the one. I think I, I, I just wanted to do a gardening one. Right, let's, oh, let's, let's have a look at it. So this is one of Alwyn's planters today. Well, there looks like there's some bits of lavender in there. And, and then, then she's got, yes, Stu's got it. It is a, pumpkin. It's, it's a pumpkin viola, Very yeah, definitely. Nice. Yeah, ooh, and the purple and the that's going to look beautiful. Oh my word, I can't tell what that is. <laughs> I can't tell what that is. What is oh, that? I can't, I can't quite see the fl the, It looks like a few buds are coming on it. It, does, it, it does say, it says on the side does that it does. Say there yeah, on the it label? does. Oh, I can't see that. Oh, that's a bay. Yeah. That's the bay bush. Yeah, very, very nice. I bet you got that from us. Yeah, I remember we did an amazing uh, we did. We twin did a pack great of those as well. Ooh, that oh, that is. Um, oh, that's so annoying. What is that? I know what that is, and I cannot name it. It's that plant, isn't it? You know, that plant. It's green. Yeah, can't remember. Oh, God, I've got a blank on that one as well. I've got a blank. <laughs> We're really good. Right, let's have some more then. We'll come back Go to on. that one. We'll come back. Oh, is that all of them? Oh, well, we, we got nearly everything, didn't well, we? Well, we got nearly everything. Oh, well, let us know what that last one is, will you? Because yeah. that, that's going to really bug me. It's going to really Anthony's bug me. Anthony's just messaged in. Oh, he's been in the garden this morning. He's been making some wooden planters. Oh, very good. Can we see these wooden planters? Oh, I can say I've put an order in. I could, I could do some new ones. Oh, we're brightening up his day with our products and enthusiasm. Oh, thank you. Thank, thank you. you. That's what we try to do. That's generally yeah. why we. That's why we love coming it's here. It's not hard though, because we are genuinely so. You can tell. <laughs> we do like it. We do. We do like it here. There's no. 
I mean, I, I don't, I'm just going to be really honest. I, I used to work in the shopping town for many years, and Be Bex was there for many years as well. And um, back in the day, it was amazing. We had a great time. We had a lovely but time. There was just, uh, there was so, yeah, I'm not, I'm, I'm not really interested in DIY. So if I got a DIY show, <laughs> I was like, oh, really? <laughs> oh, no, it's a three-hour special on DIY. <laughs> um, to be fair, actually, I learned to like DIY a bit more because, actually, yeah. I, I I was never taught very well with DIY, and, actually, I did find a few products yeah. that really helped me. But, you know, like... I mean, we would have our favourite shows. Yeah. There was definitely the favourite shows, and the gardening shows were the favourite shows, yeah. weren't they? Those yeah. are the ones was, where you go what, in, yeah, four yeah. hours of gardening today, yeah. yes. I used to, I used to always try and say, I, I, I used to persuade my boss to always put me on gardening. I was like, oh, please give please. me the gardening shows, <laughs> please. Um, so now just do gardening is, is wonderful. Yeah, it, it's exciting, it, isn't it? It really is. It's amazing. And actually to work with you garden as well, because we, we, we've known Peter McDermott, our head gardener, for many years. He's such a great guy, but it's such a great team here. You know, everyone is, is passionate about gardening. Craig, you don't get to see Craig, but Craig gets all the plants ready. So he, his job is he, he'll go to the nursery, we, he'll see which plants are on the show, and he'll bring them to us and he'll, and he'll help us display and things. But Craig loves gardening. He loves it. You know, he, he loves gardening. He always tells us, doesn't he, about his, uh, his skyscraper lilies yeah. and all the stuff that he's got going on. He potted up these for us this morning, our, uh, um, these ones at the front. Now, who's they look our, so pretty. Who's our head of accounts? Can you remember? Emma. 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 So Emma is head of accounts. And guess what she trained in? You're probably going to think, you know, maths or something like that. No, horticulture. <laughs> yeah. Seriously. So the, the passion, I mean, she, so it's just amazing that everyone is so passionate and you really feel that. And actually, most people that come to work here, if they're not into plants, they, they probably leave quite quickly. They realise it's yeah. not for them. But so everyone that's here long term, they just love their gardens. And, and hopefully that passion comes through uh, from our potting shed right now. Uh, now we've uh, we have got, you've got, have you got a cojone mine? I have I'll got a cojone yeah. mine. Yeah. So I planted a cojone mine last year and it was a little baby one. It was a, in a nine centimetre oh, pot, course, tiny, yeah. tiny little one. And it looks beautiful, but this is a slow growing beauty. So mine is nowhere near the size of this. I love that it's slow growing. It's fantastic. It's got that bonsai feel to it. Beautiful cherry blossom lovely when it's naked as well with its beautiful zigzag branches there's a lot to say about this there particular really plant, is. Isn't there? now i could talk about it for hours bex could but would you like to hear from uh, a wonderful guy is a clue yeah he's called uh, dave the plant man he actually joined us for a show last week he actually did. talking predominantly about harkness roses but uh dave's got a big following on social media is it He's from Wigan, he's down to earth, but he knows his stuff, yeah. doesn't he? And here he is just uh, to say a little bit about Coach Nome. Well, I'm here at the U Garden Nursery with Dave the plant man, and we both walked past these and we went, oh, I've got to talk about them. I, lo I love this one, don't you? I do. It's um, Prunus, which means it's a kind of a dwarf cherry. And Coach Nome, I think, means something like whirling butterflies. And if you look at it, it looks like it's got little tiny ziggy zag, zaggy stems. Yeah. So you could put this in a Japanese style pot on your patio and it's proper Japanese garden. It's really oriental plant. It's beautiful. I, I love the, the fact that you get all the blossom just before the leaves are coming out. And then in autumn, it turns a beautiful tremendous, fiery red, doesn't tremendous it? Tremendous autumn colour. Yeah. So It doesn't go too big either. No, it's like a bonsai. I mean, yeah. they take, if you put this, this would be an ideal one to put in a pot on your patio because it's just in a really good, it, it loves living in pots. And it likes sun, doesn't it? Loves sun, sun yeah. well-drained yeah. soil. But no, I, I love it too. It's an absolute beauty. If you haven't got one. Makes so. you smile in spring. It does. <laughs> My, mine's just come out in blossom. And yeah, every time I leave the house, I sit, I'm like, ah, oh, spring's here. So Kojo no Mai, or some people say Kojo no Mai, but um, yeah, it's an absolute winner. And every spring, about this kind of time, March, it's going to delight. Interesting fact. That's what Dave normally says. It is. <laughs> but it's a gorgeous plant. Um, and it, it has lots of different, I would say, interesting parts. Obviously, the blossom is lovely, but then the leaves and these are just coming out now. Yours may have some blossom, but then the leaves come. Then in autumn, they go that lovely fiery red. 
And then even the branches were said because it's a bit like bonsai esque. Yeah. It looks good naked, as you said. It really does. It's it, it's a stunner. It's definitely a standout. It's definitely a talking piece, and it it will delight for you, particularly in springtime when you get the blossom on those naked branches. But as Sean said, there's something that happens yeah. with this in every season, so it really is a beautiful one. An amazing price, genuinely. I am so shocked that we've been bringing this to you at the price we have been bringing it because it it it's at its best. So it's really amazing that we've we've taken so much off that price. Um, just quickly, by the way. In terms of saving money, yeah. free postage on all orders over £40. So get some compost today. And if you're buying one or two plants, get your order to over £40, then you get free delivery. If you're not able to spend £40 with us, you know, you might be on a bit of a budget, say whatever, it's £6.99 per order. So I do bear that you don't pay per plant or per item, it's per order, six nine tonight. And we've got a great free gift, haven't we? Yeah, the oh, beautiful Sarah this. Bernhardt Peony. She is absolutely stunning. Sarah Bernhardt was a famous French actress, renowned for her beauty. And that's why this particular uh, peony has been named after her, because it is absolutely beautiful. Huge blooms. We are talking potentially eight inches in diameter. That's bigger than my hand. They really are big, bold, beautiful. They are stunning as cut flowers. <laughs> expensive yeah. to buy as cut flowers but you don't need to because you will get one free with every single purchase if you want multiples of these just place a couple of different orders um, make sure you use the code which will pop up there in a second because that is what enters that into your basket and just quickly we better tell you how to plant it actually so that's yeah. how it arrives it's a bare root and all you need to do i might as well get it out give it a good soak yeah, so I would stick it in a bowl of water for a good, I mean, probably a good couple of hours, actually. Really do rehydrate that. And then you can see, look, the, you can see they, that is wants to shoot. Um, you can see that's where the growth was last year. And you only want to place that uh, an inch or two beneath the ground. Yeah, they don't want to be planted too deep. If you go too deep, then they, they won't flower, basically. You just get so lots of leaves. It's just an inch or two below the ground. If somebody in, uh, asked a question, actually, because they were going to plant it and they were going to put a layer of um, strotch on top, does that count to the one or two inches? Yes, it does. It really doesn't but want to go too deep. Honestly, they're so easy to grow. And you, you, you may well get one or two flowers this year, but it will take probably a two year three to really get established. Yeah, the same with any perennial yeah. plant that you that you plant. It does take a little bit of time, but they are long lived. Decades worth of life you can get out of a peony. And you can grow peonies in pots, but I would say do it in a good sized pot with some depth to it as well. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but that is your free gift with every single order. And if you have just joined us, good morning. Hello. Uh, you might not know what we're called. <laughs> so uh, I am Sean Ryan. Uh, I call myself Sean Ryan, presenter and plant man. So you can always follow me on uh, Facebook and Instagram. You get to see what I'm doing in the garden. You get to see a bit of my mum, what she's doing in her garden. You get to see you wearing a T-shirt in the morning. I just wore a T-shirt this yeah. morning. Yeah. I was you look quite buff this morning when you posted that. I was quite impressed. I just worked you out. You just worked out, aren't you? Yeah. <laughs> Not bad, I wasn't buff, come on. <laughs> You're looking good, you are. Uh, and I am Rebecca Edwards, you can follow me as well. Rebecca Bex Edwards or Bex Edwards My Garden. Uh, we do try and post a lot about what's going on here, what we're doing in our gardens. We, you know, if anything changes, it's, it, 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 we'll always try and post and it on there. I mean, the bottom line is, is well, we grow a lot of things, obviously, that, that you that see on the show. Yeah. I mean, a huge amount. Yeah. I think my garden is about 90% new garden. Yeah. Um, I'm sure yours is the same. Yeah, so, uh, yeah, it's just you get to see our journeys as well. So, yeah, yeah we'd love to, uh, to have you follow us on social media as well. Right, we've got a beautiful, stunning rhododendron next time. Yeah, the Nova Zembla. Oh, my word. I love rhododendrons. Yeah, I do. I really like... And that, it's, it's the flowers. Obviously, you've got glorious evergreen foliage on here. So, you know, there's something to look at. It's not like a deciduous or a herbaceous and it disappears over the winter. You do have gorgeous evergreen foliage, but it's the flowers for me on a rhododendron. And check out these massive fat oh, no. buds that are on here. The flowers that appear on rhododendrons are just silky, glossy, gorgeous. They almost don't look real, do they? They look like faux silk flowers. Yeah. And they do smother the plant. They're absolutely incredible. And for me, the, 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 the bright red of this yeah. is extraordinary, isn't it? You, some, you do get some amazing colours when it comes to rhododendrons. Yeah. Um, a few things you need to know. They do like acid soil. Yeah, so you need the ericaceous compost. If you haven't got any, just go onto our website. You'll find it on there. Um, I always think they do well in 
sort of part shade. They do. So I, I think mean, some it's... people grow them in sun, but mine have always done better in part shade. I don't think they like the 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 heat. You know, the biggest heat of the day. So if you can shelter them from the hottest part of the day, you know, that midday sort of three four hours. If you can shelter them from that, I think they do much better. But they are easy and they are evergreen and they and they're relatively slow growing as yeah. well. Yeah. And you don't you don't need to deadhead. They 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 just. You know, they just drop the flowers when they're ready to. And you don't really need to prune at all, do you, with a rhododendron? No, unless, I mean, if it's a damaged or diseased branch, yeah. uh, then you would. But no, uh, they tend to grow really nice in terms of the shape naturally mm. as well. Yeah, really nice kind of mounded yeah. shape. You get but to the... I, I think, Bex, it's the fact that they're evergreen as well. The leaves, of, I like the foliage. Yeah, it's interesting. I say, I've got various borders in my garden and like there's one that looks amazing in the summer, but in winter it looks terrible. There's nothing there. <laughs> but my borders with my rhododendrons, they always look good. Always look yeah. good, yeah, absolutely. Right, we've got loads to show over here. There's so many things. <gasps> You're making me skip euphobia. Euphobia. He's making me No, we, right, these are coming up, euphobia. Sedums, lupins, love this collection. Allium, gorgeous. But we have got our Tabri coming up next. Now, I have never grown this one. No, and I'm quite interested about this because we very much like grow your own, don't we? We we're, do. We're, <laughs> you've so I've just seen the price. Is that right? <laughs> Well, we'll be growing a table there. Seven ninety nine. Seven ninety nine. Or seven nineteen if you're a club member, and that's size you get. Yeah. Um, yeah, I, lo I love the grow your own. I, we both like doing yeah. the grow your own. I've got some blueberries. I do strawberries. I grow potatoes. You know, some years it is actually a really enjoyable journey to go on. And tabries are quite an interesting one to grow your own because. When was the last time you went into a supermarket and saw a tabery for sale? I don't think I've ever seen one. I don't think I have. And I think the reason is that they're just, because they're a soft fruit, they're too delicate yeah. to transport. But a tabery has that beautiful, beautiful flavour. It's kind of a mixture of a raspberry with a blackberry. And it looks bigger than a raspberry to me. Yeah, it's got that sort of elongated yeah. um, shape to it as well. Um, although I love Grow Your Own, I... I don't have a separate area. No. But do you know what? Lots of the garden shows that we went to last year, they were really encouraging just growing your fruit and veg amongst your beds and borders and your other things, because uh, the pollinator's there anyway. And, and it's really nice to do that sometimes. And this, I'm looking at the size of it. Yeah. We I should mean, get some fruit this year, though. I think so, yeah. absolutely. I mean, it, it can get quite big. We are talking, once it gets established, maybe a metre and a half, two metres tall. So, so you're going to need to give it a bit of space. I'm just wondering, could I grow that up the tower pot, do you think? Would it, would it no, probably wouldn't get enough light, maybe, would it? I don't know. I don't know. I think you could. I mean, it's not massive, a massive climber, particularly. I think it can go into a pot. It's obviously got a um, cane in there yeah. just to sort of support it slightly. I'll be honest, no, I think it'd be better just in one of our 30 litre pots, don't you? No, it's... I don't know. So you, 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 do want to you do want to train it slightly, maybe up a trellis or a, or a fence or something. I don't know, I'm quite intrigued. I think you potentially could so do it in the tower it, part. Do you think it would look nice, wouldn't it? But then would it be, di I don't know, because it would be difficult, I don't know. I might track. do it. Yeah. I need another tower pot. <laughs> I might do it and see what happens. Yeah. It's going to want a sunny spot I'm just thinking. I'm way. just thinking, I don't know if you'll be able to get to the fruit easy enough on that, Pex, I don't know. No, because you can get your hands in. Yeah. Yeah. I'm going to try it. With the fruit, I don't know. We won't know until we try it. You're going to try it, try. Okay. So, yes, put it in a decent sized pot if you're growing it up a pot because it's going to get nice and big. You're definitely going to want to provide some support yeah, in there so as well. Yeah, so it might just be cane if that's uh, yeah. you know, easier. Put it in the sunniest spot that you possibly can because it's definitely going to want a decent amount of sun in order to ripen those beautiful berries. But it is winter hardy, very, very easy to grow. It is deciduous, so it will drop its yeah. leaves over the winter time. It is self-fertile, so it's not one that you need to worry about as far as the pollination is concerned. Um, but easy to grow, problem free. Now, apparently, um, that picture of Alwyn, it was raspberries. And I didn't think it was. Was it? It didn't look like raspberries to me because of the way the canes are. I nearly said that, Alwyn, and I thought, oh no. I was not thinking raspberries, but yes, okay, thank now you. Now you said Alwyn. it, of course it, of course it is. <laughs> but it was, it was the canes. He, I think had the canes been a bit more of a like, teepee sort of like, structure, I'd have got it straight away. Of course it is. There God. you go. Thanks, now you see the leaves, it's so obvious, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, thanks, Alwyn, though. Uh, 
You know how I say it's rubbish as well. We've got monitors over there. We haven't done like this. We oh. both come around um, the front to look at the pictures. Yeah. <laughs> so, right, the table, obviously, like all soft fruits, needs, needs to be uh, kept in nice, moist soil. Soft fruits are full of, obviously, mostly water so you need to keep that well watered as well but I'm, I'm going to try the table in I'm going to get the table in I'm going to get a towel pot yeah. and I'm going to see what happens a good idea let's try it Ken Ken's just emailed in saying the plant we couldn't guess was a black currant ah. a black currant oh Ken yeah close but no yeah. it's a raspberry no yeah, yeah raspberry I like this game. <laughs> I'm not sure I do. Do you know, uh, <laughs> true story, I, I had a, a selection of um, perennials the, the other day that, that, that was on our show on QVC. Uh, and there's 24 of them. And I, I opened up because they needed to water and stuff. And then I looked at them and I, and I thought, hang on, because I had to put them all back. And obviously, I'll, they're and all labelled. But there's only a couple, because I, I, obviously, the way, if they're in flower, it's so easy, isn't yeah. it? But there's a couple, I was like, oh, I'm not sure. What's that but one? But I got it, I did get it, luckily, yeah. <laughs> yeah. But, um, Talking of QVC, I'm on there later on Yeah, tonight. sure, tonight, aren't I'm you? I'm on tonight and I'm what on time? tomorrow. What time? Nine o'clock, is it? Nine o'clock tonight, and um, nine, I'm in the nine and ten o'clock show tomorrow as well. It's not a full new garden show, so I don't know exactly what time I'll be on, but I'm on during nine Brilliant. o'clock tonight and nine o'clock and ten o'clock tomorrow morning. So I've got a busy day. I'm driving to London this afternoon. Yes. On a bank holiday weekend. Oh. Yeah. Uh, right, one more email while we're here. Ian. Oh, Ian. Oh, my God. Hang right, on, let me come round. Ian. Oh, they are beautiful. Fantastic. I am, I am in love with bonsais at the moment. Oh, my word. They look amazing. You've got some lovely little colourful What a great ones. display that is, isn't it? That looks fantastic. That's so inspiring, isn't it? Oh, I love that. Ian, I love it. I absolutely love those. Have you seen mine, Ian? Have you seen mine on my social medias? Because I've been posting, I've got this lovely Japanese Acer one. Oh. Uh, so I've got a little Acer one and I've got a Japanese larch, which I've got not got a clue what I'm doing with. Um, but I'm going to research it and find out what to do. I love bonsai. I think they're oh. fascinating. We love Ian's garden. Cool. Love that. Amazing. Thank you. Have you noticed what we did there? is we went close up to the monitor so we could <laughs> yeah, see now we've had to properly, come back yeah. Round. <laughs> Seeing as we couldn't see Alwyn's raspberries properly, we thought, right, we'd better look at these a bit more closely. Uh, right, uh, we're going to move on now to uh, the Allium. <laughs> Uh, now, Alliums, I, it was Peter McDermott, our head gardener, that, that he, oh, it was years ago, he, he said to me, we had Alliums on one of our garden shows, and I'd never grown them. He said, look, grow Alliums. If I'm honest, he actually handed me some and said, like, did he? Yeah, he did. He said, grow, grow these. these. He said, but I promise you, you want to grow more Alliums, and you'll grow them every single year. And he's so right. I've never, ever looked back. That's what's happened to me. So I planted my first Alliums last year. That's the ones I planted. Oh. That is these, the Allium Purple Sensation. Um, and that's what I had last year. Now I've planted all the alliums. Yeah, so They're the, all in pots. So you've got the allium mollies, your I've got the molly, the Neapolitanum. I'm sure I planted the drumsticks. I yeah. think I planted the... Um, the other one. <laughs> I've planted them all, basically. But, uh, and that's exactly what's happened. But this one, I always think when we think of alliums, this is the one that comes into our mind, first of all. Because yeah, there are lots of coloured alliums. There are the yellow ones, the white ones. But the big ball of purple. Yeah. For me, this is the most sensational one. And the name is absolutely perfect. Um, your other alien, which one was it? Do you think if it's come to you yet? Uh, yeah, I think it might be, uh, thank you, Stuart, the Christophy and the um, Siculum as I've well. I've got the Siculums. I, I They're got, nice. I got the pack of alliums. You know, when we did the mixed pack, um, and those are the ones that yeah. I planted. Oh, you've got them all then. What I've done, though, um, is I've put them all in separate pots. I haven't mixed them up together. This year, what I've done is one variety in a pot, another variety in a pot. Next year, I'm, once these are finished, then I'm going to plant them out in the borders. Well, these, these are going to be tall. These yeah, are going to be huge yeah. balls of purple. A lot of garden designers, you'll know, if you've been to Chelsea, they often they often use these alliums because they make a statement. Yeah, they do. They really are ultimate alliums. They are sensational. And what is so lovely is, as we've said, when the actual flowers go over, they produce the most amazing seed pods, and you can actually leave those. And pretty much all year round, and mm -hmm. they still give great structure and architecture. Or you can bring them in and have them as dry displays, but they take your breath away. Now, there's with alliums. The leaves 
I think can get a little bit straggly. Yeah, they can. Um, so sometimes you might want to, if you've got these in pots, you might want to underplant the alliums of certain things. I mean, I'm a bit naughty sometimes and trim the leaves back, but you really you're should not do really no, supposed no. To, You're supposed to let them do their thing. Sometimes I take some of the the worst looking off. But if you're, if you know, if you've got them planted in borders, you can you can plant other yeah. things around them. It's not the foliage you're growing these for. It is those beautiful flowers that are getting, that, you know, those tall, um, strong stems on these they can get up to a meter in height and it's amazing actually that those stems can hold the yeah. weight of that ball up at the top they really are very very strong they don't withstand balls uh, kids with footballs though i will tell you that from experience um mine got destroyed last year because they were in the border opposite the goal the football goal for the kids so they got destroyed that's why they're in pots over there on the yeah. patio so the kids can't destroy them but as far as withstanding you know winds and breeze and things is yeah. concerned yes they are perfect and, and they do look amazing on mass now you are going to get two of these in nine centimeter pots they're only nine pounds 98 you got a 10 pound saving don't forget postage is 6.99 per order but if you spend over £40, you will get free delivery. And most of you this week are spending over £40. Just get yourself some compost, get some amazing pots, and uh, you can actually say get free delivery when you spend over £40. Right, I love the Lupin collection. This is coming up next. I adore Lupins. I remember having them as a child. But there are so many more interesting varieties now, aren't they? Yeah. They're better colours. Yeah. Gardens are far more exciting than they used to be, aren't they? They really are. <laughs> yeah, breeding has come on oh, a long way, hasn't it? It really has. Now, you actually get three of these. They're all in uh, nine centimetre pots. They will flower this year, and they'll just come back year after year, getting bigger and stronger. And I'm trying to look here. I don't think I've got a favourite. I think no. all, I actually all three of those work well together, don't yeah, you? Yeah, I think plant them together as well. You know, yeah. plant in threes, get those beautiful colours mixing in sort of, you know, in, in there together. They are absolutely beautiful. And look at this colour here. But the amazing oh. thing with the gallery collection is that these aren't going to get tall and leggy no. and a bit straggly like some lupins can. These have been specifically bred to be compact to be compact and robust so we are only talking maybe a couple of feet in height here whereas lupins they can get to three even four feet in height and they can start to look a bit too tall and a bit too leggy you won't get that with this the specific breeding has been um, done to keep them that little bit more compact bees and butterflies oh yeah it's a magnet for them they absolutely adore these plants I'm just looking at so I'm trying to choose a favorite you don't have to because you get all three <laughs> but the bike one down there yes. is Pretty Something, amazing, isn't it? Isn't it? Yeah. Um, and and I, I'm always so impressed with lupins, how many flowers they produce in a season. Uh, these say they're already nine cents pots, so they'll be flowering in their first year, but year two, year three, you'll get more and more and more. Um, I think lupins are incredibly easy to grow as well. Yeah, there's very little that you actually have have to do no, I mean they'll grow I'm, in any soil type um, there's no really not really any major pruning or anything you need to do they're herbaceous and, uh, they I die mean, back down I mean like the old leaf you might want to take off it gets a bit straggly yeah. I do cut the dead flowers off and then you, you're more likely to get more obviously <coughs> um, sun part shade I've got mine in both actually yeah to be honest I think they're probably going to do a little bit better in more sun, sun yeah. but you know they'll be fine if they get a bit of shade yeah. as well. I've got, I've got them say both areas of my garden and they, they just, they're easy, they're beautiful and they come back year after year after year and actually if you do leave some of the flowers on that produce seeds they actually do self seed quite well as well. Yeah and you know what I love is the, the, the foliage on here as well, yes mm. we want the flowers and they're beautiful but the, 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 the leaves on here, the palmate, almost palmate leaves that you've got on here, I just think that that adds that extra interest and those flower spikes just rise up out of that and don't forget do feed your perennials without blooming fast hopefully you got that as a free gift recently but we do have the big uh, tubs on our website and the big sachets You're as definitely well worth investing in that right we're going to move on now to uh the sedum collection now uh you told me yesterday and i didn't know this it wouldn't plant of the year chelsea 2019 and i um i was really like I was sort of pleased to hear it, but not because there's another plant that we were selling last week, the osteosperm and purple sub. Yep. And that was shortlisted, but the African days, but didn't win. <coughs> and I kept thinking, why didn't it? Why didn't it win? 
And now maybe I know why, because it was yep. up against this. Because I've got sedums in my garden, but none of them are as beautiful as this. The colours yeah. that you get in the one plant is incredible. <laughs> well, look, you've got some gorgeous buttery yellow. Oh. You've got some kind of corals and peaches and yeah. pinks included pinks. in there. You've got variegation on the green leaves in there as well. You also get little frothy yellow flowers that appear on here as well, sort of late summer which is super interesting. Really, this is all about that foliage though. And it's a really versatile plant. It's kind of multifunctional. You can use it as ground cover. You can use it as a gap filler. You can put it in a pot, you know, put three of these into a, into a decent sized pot together and it'll create a beautiful display just on its own. It can go into your borders. It can go into your rockeries. It sort of naturally creeps, which is, it, it makes it ideal to sort of soften edges. Mm. So I've planted a couple of these just at the front of my borders because I've got slate going around the edge of the lawn. It just it just edges the lawn and onto the border. It just softens it slightly. It's really beautiful. Um, I'm going to have some. Uh, seriously, and the price today, they're working out about £4.36 each, which is phenomenal. And don't forget, all of you with club discounts, uh, those of you that are club members, 11 67 for three. And look at that, in a pot, that looks beautiful, doesn't it? I think it? it does. On its own in a pot, it looks yeah, really, really beautiful. Else. And there's a little um, yellow, flowers yellow flowers that are coming as well. I mean, they're, they're super interesting. And bees love them as yeah. well. You know, it's really attractive to bees. It can cope with shade as well. So it's fine in full sun, but it can also cope with a bit of shade. So it's really, really versatile. And it's just, it's quite water efficient as well. Like it doesn't need to be mollycoddled in loads of water. It's just a... It's an easy so I think one. it's a perfect beginner plant. You know, it's easy for somebody who doesn't know too much about gardening, who might feel a bit intimidated about gardening. But it's also really good for people who've got a bit more experience yeah. because it's just one of those that can work in so many places. Uh, they should, by the way, be nine nine ten each. I mean, bear in mind this one Chelsea Plant of the Year two thousand nineteen. Yeah, there was only one winner. And the competition was steep. So the Osteospernum, <laughs> Purple Sun was in there. That is an amazing Osteospernum. Yeah. This was the winner, the one plant that got that accolade of Plant of the Year at Chelsea. That is incredible, isn't it? It really is. We shouldn't underplay that award no. at all because the competition for that is incredible. God, I remember when I got presenter of the year, Bex. Yeah. When was that? Um, you I, didn't at all, did no, you? No, I didn't. <laughs> Bex for a second was like... I don't, I don't remember that. No. <laughs> You would have won, though, Sean. No. I'm sure you would. No. Uh, right. Um, oh, Ian's not seen my bonsai. We got a picture. We have. Uh, by the way, uh, thank you to everyone that's ordering. We, we love having you watching, but don't forget to confirm your orders. Try and spend over £40. Get yourself some compost. Get some of those um, pots that are on offer today, and you get free delivery when you spend over £40. Right, this is, I've seen this in real life. Do. That is my... Uh, Japanese, uh, my little Acer. It's lovely. So that, I love it. Look how pretty it is. Oh, Gorgeous. It is. It's so cute, honestly. And all the leaves are just coming out on it. And what I've done, oh, sorry. I've wired the, um, the branches. I've got a before and after. I'll put it on my socials later, Ian. If you follow me on my social media, I'll put it on my stories. Oh, he doesn't do um, socials. Never mind. I like, um, I like your tulips as well in the background. They're yeah, great. You. So what I've done is I've wired the branches um, to just make them go in the direction I want them to go in. You've got to be careful though when you wire it yeah, because you don't want it to cut into the bark. So you've just got to keep an eye on it as it grows to make sure it's not I cutting think that's in. Gorgeous. I saw that Isn't the other pretty? Day. Yeah, it's really pretty. Uh, it looks even better now because get more leaves on it. Yeah, I'll, I've... I'll, I'll work out what I'm doing with the Japanese larch because I've got not a clue what to do with that. I'll do some research. Right. Thank you for all of uh, your comments and things as well. Right, this is this is what I ordered last night. Because I've got euphorbies in my garden. I've got some green ones with slightly yellowy green. But I remember seeing this last year, and I, I think it might have sold out because I don't know why I didn't buy it last year. But we have got three of these. It's called the Miner's Merlot, forty-nine seven. And one thing I've learned uh, with my garden, it's really important to get different textures in your borders, but different colours. And you imagine, and just these two together, and actually these probably grow very happily together. Look at that. You know? Actually, that's a really good combo. Isn't it? That is that's a, a really. Combo. I mean, look, that's a really good combo. Yeah, that's a really nice Yeah. One. I mean, I'd be tempted to have, if you're doing this in a pot, that in the centre, and then three of those around the around edge. Around the edge, that would that, be a That would look knockout. amazing. Yeah. 
But that's, yeah, that's what, to me, what gardening is all about, mixing those different colours, those different textures, and those together. Wow. Yeah. Love it. But this, now um, I'm going to need to buy some more sedum to do that around my euphorbia. Yeah. Now, you got this last year. <laughs> I and, did. Um, Bex is in... You, you, Yours, yours, is your, yours will be just coming close to flowering again. It's flowering right oh, so now. This is now. This yeah, is, yeah. Oh, wow. So I did a little video. I'm sure, sure uh, Stu's going to bring it up for you. I did a little video just two days ago. This is what it looks wow. like in my garden right now. See, mine are, mine are not in flower yet. It is absolutely incredible. That, and if you move that foliage as well, you've got some more, more darker green bits down the bottom. But I tell you, that yellow, those yellow flowers yeah. against the bronze, that is just... I mean, they should be coming into flower. Oh. I mean, it's, it's probably a little bit early, like a lot of things are. Normally, flowering time is between April and October. You get, you know, flushes of these flowers that appear. So it's a little bit earlier. Um, but it's that foliage and it's the oh. shape of it. It's just, it is incredibly interesting. Super easy. I planted that. I have not touched it since. No. I have just left it alone. The, Obviously, it's got the occasional watering when I go around and the occasional feeding when I went and, around and last I mean, year. But other mind, than that, you, I've done nothing. You get the odd bit that you know in winter time that maybe goes a, a little bit struggling or whatever. But they are super easy, right? Really that for me, I'm so I can't wait for mine to be delivered. I'm going to check my phone. Is it on its way? <laughs> <laughs> but, um, uh, so I will be. I will be. Uh, it will be arriving, uh, I'm sure, very shortly. To, I'm sure to the, it will to be. the post. But um, three of them, and look at that club price as well, 13.47. And say, so when you think about that colour, the only, the, there's very few. The, the only the plants I've got in my garden of a similar colour, the Laura Patalum. Yeah. Similar colour. And we often talk about it, don't we, with this bronzy, purpley, you know, burgundy foliage. It's really, really quite valuable yeah. to have in your garden because everything sort of contrasts beautifully and, and stands out. And that was one plant you were looking at in that video, by the way. That was one plant. Yeah. And you get three. And they're quite fast growing as well. So you know, it grew to that size, pretty much that size last year. So if you want to fill in your borders it will grow quite quickly in okay. that one year it will reach about two feet height and spread ultimately is the size we're talking about with this but it is it can you see the little ladybirds just on, on the bottom there yeah uh, wildlife absolutely adore it low maintenance easy to grow but that rich dark purple foliage and then there's lovely yellow flowers on there I think it's a winner yeah. see when I planted winner, my winner, winner. euphorbias I I didn't know this particular variety and I love mine I really do but I'm going to put these with them actually, so you get loads of different colours. Yeah, they're gorgeous. And, I'm, and uh, I am now going to go for those uh, award-winning sedums as well. Right, loads of messages coming in. Margaret's just emailed. Good morning, Margaret. Oh, oh. look at that rose! Oh, and she's got a tower pot. Yay! Woohoo! What have you got in your tower pot, Margaret? I'm coming round. Hang on. I tell you what, that rhododendron. A few more <laughs> weeks, maybe, and it'll be Stu's out. Stu's getting annoyed with me. Maybe four, six weeks. That looks like, is it a jasmine? No, it's a wisteria, isn't it? Look, I think it might be a wisteria in there. Let me know, Margaret. Love that you've got a towel pot. No, I, I, I see, I can't quite I'm not see. a wisteria, what am I talking about? I think about? clematis, I that. that's I a clematis. clematis. That's yeah. exactly what I meant. I'm going to say, I can, see, I can see the clematis buds yeah. there on the top. I don't know why I said wisteria, I meant clematis. I don't know why I said wisteria. You've got, you've got wisteria. Sam, right. Sam's been planting. Oh, that lovely. God. Absolutely gorgeous. So you've got all the... Uh, yeah, it's the, the Victoriana lace. I've got those. those in my I've yeah. got them as well. Yeah. They really stand out, don't they? They look beautiful at the and, moment. And your grape uh, hyacinths look good there. Your tulips coming out. Absolutely gorgeous. Yeah. Oh, Stunning. look at that. Absolutely stunning. I love that. And I tell you what, I think the um, the daffodils and the grey hyacinths there, the yellow and the blue, looks amazing together. They really together. worked, don't yeah, they? Yeah, really nice. What else has she got, Stu? Tell I'm going to say what tower pot. <gasps> oh! <laughs> Wow, oh. uh, that's the, uh, the Fatsia spider's web, one of your favourites. Fatsia, yes. yes. Well done, Sam. You've been doing a great job. Um, I love that Fatsia, by the way. Absolutely gorgeous. Yeah, my husband has finally helped me dig out the plant um, where I'm going to be Come putting on. my Fatsia, so I'm very excited about that. Fatsia so, is thank going you. into the garden. Thank you, uh, Sam. Uh, well done, Sam. Uh, they look beautiful. Oh, and... Uh, 
Sam, oh, Sam's, uh, Sam's cooking a lovely stew today as well, Is apparently. She? Yes. Uh, right. Um, we're going to go back to this is really important at home. We only got, well, I say only, I think we got 10,000. We only got 10,000. Yeah, 10, only 10,000. Um, now, you've got to remember that, uh, you know, we, we, we have a really big mail order business as well here at U Garden. So the Oleander, the response has been amazing. They're really hard to get hold of in the UK. We work with a top breeder in Sicily. Uh, family business and breeding Oleanders for years. And I've seen Oleanders with U Garden for many years, as has our head gardener, as has Bex. But the quality of these is off the scale. They're so well formed. They're so, you know, the, the branches. Sometimes you buy an oleander and it's a bit straggly, a bit leggy. Look at these. Yeah. And they're already, most of them on the nursery, ready to go right now, are uh, covered in buds. Some, because they're in our tunnels, are just coming out in flower. They, talking of flowering, these are Mediterranean plants, but they're hardly to minus five in the UK. They're going to flower from about, we normally say May through to November, but... They are in bud right now, so you may get flowers a bit earlier. They're fully evergreen. Um, they love sun. They love well-drained soil. But they actually, we say, thrive on neglect. Mm. So if you go away on a holiday, you know sometimes you think, oh, good on a holiday, I've got no one to water my garden. Other plants may die, shrivel, struggle. These thrive on neglect. So even if you're away for a few weeks, they're not going to care. Yeah. They're not going to miss you, sorry. Yeah, really low maintenance, very little pruning that you need to do. We would encourage as flowers fade that you trim those off. You know, deadhead, that will encourage more and more blooms to come through. But all summer long, you will get those beautiful flowers. And they have a glorious scent to yeah, them as well. Yeah, it's that lovely sweet fragrance. It's beautiful, isn't it? And then, of course, you are still going oh, to get that gorgeous evergreen foliage all through the year. That is, we went and had a little wonder at the nursery yeah. yesterday morning. And Are they that's my exactly legs what Sean's been talking about. Look, look at how them. uniform they all look. There we are. They're beautiful. Yeah. I don't know what that. we're saying. <laughs> Something weird, probably. That's generally but but what we do. Th that's the I'm so glad we got to see that because that is the quality. There are hundreds of them. Remember, we got we, we've. I think it was the order was ten thousand. But uh, just a few things you need to remember: do not eat any part of your oleander, and that applies to humans and pets. Uh, as we say, you'll know if you garden. You, there, there are many plants you have to keep a bit of an eye on in your garden, um, but. You need to get those today because it is a buy one, get one free. Yeah, I mean, we did have other colours. We got most of the pink because that's the p most popular one, but we did have the, uh, a yeah. few other colours and they are gone. But we know that the pink um, is going to be the most popular, which is why we've got the biggest stock of these. And I mean, if you are one of our club members, you're getting those for £13.50 each. I mean, that is phenomenal it is because it's a buy one get one yeah. free i mean i love it when we do these i mean even better is a buy one get two free but a buy one can't, get do, that one. With them. <laughs> can't do that with them no a buy one get one free is amazing you put one in your basket when you place your order for a buy one get one free you enter the code that you can see down there ygtv1324 there's a little box when you place an order it says do you have an offer code we'll show you in a second that's the code you enter and then magically another one appears in your basket yeah. you might look because these are, I was going to say rare as hen's teeth, that's an old expression, but wow, they are. That is an old it expression, is, isn't it? Okay. I'm How no, longer, you, I'm no longer 20. Uh, <laughs> but they, they are really difficult, and I'm not going into the boring uh, you know, background, but any plant now that comes in from abroad, there's, there's a lot of rigorous. Uh, you know, paperwork and lots of checks and things. They have to have their own passport. Don't they, they do. It's it's not easy to travel for us and plants now. So um, you know we are working with the top breeders in the world. Now if you buy them on our website without our code, it's one for twenty nine ninety nine. It's two for fifty four ninety eight. Three for eighty nine ninety seven. But if you want them now and you all you do, add one two basket use our code you have to put the code in this is a special code for all of you lovely viewers watching today on our live stream ygtv1324 watch the magic happen <gasps> Oh, that's better. We've got two freebies in actual fact. I mean, the, the savings that we're talking about there, because, you know, you've got a free Oleander at twenty nine ninety nine. You've got a free Sarah Bernhardt Peony at £9.99. No. Like, that, those savings are incredible. Now, postage is capped at six ninety nine per order, but if you get your order to over £40, get some, some compost, um, you're going to use it. And there you go. Suddenly, you've got free delivery as well. 
and the price has gone down to £54.97. If you want to become a club member, do it now, and that would save you a further £5.50, and the club membership is only £5 for the year. So on that order, you'd actually save money by being a club member. You get your membership fee back straight away. So, uh, yeah, the, the Oleanders, you are going to have to be... You know, I'm just going to say we've sold out of the other three colours right now. Um, we're hoping we've got enough stock of the Oleanders for, for the summer, but they are going really, really quickly. That's like they're beautiful. They're really I'd stunning. I'd like to think 10,000 would last, but we just know how Pete, popular they are, don't we? Peter Head Gardner said the way they're going, because we'd be planned for the whole summer with them, and uh, we don't think they're going to last anything like the amount of time that we hoped. Right, compost, great way of getting your orders to over £40 this one. Yeah, really good one, yeah. isn't it? Yeah. And um, this is, just to give some history and background, we, we work on an 11 acre nursery. There are many things that we will. Uh, plant ourselves, grow ourselves, bare root roses, we pot up about 150,000 of those. The, the um, ready-made hanging baskets, they're Ooh, lovely. We'll be bringing those yeah, at some point, I'm sure. We are, they're, they're a bit early now, but we'll be, uh, we'll be doing those probably in, in the next three or four weeks. But all of those grown in our premium professional compost. And if there was a better compost, we'd be using it, wouldn't we? Let's be honest, yeah. we would. Yeah. We, we want every plant to, to thrive, so this is a compost that we use. And actually, for many years, it wasn't available to customers. It was only it was used on the nursery. Yeah. It wasn't available. And suddenly, uh, one of those light bulb moments happened, and we thought, why don't we share it with our customers? Why shouldn't they have access to this premium compost? And now it is our best-selling product, and the reviews are amazing. But why is it so good, you may be asking? <laughs> Because Where do we start? It works. I mean, it's that simple. It works. It feeds our plants. It aerates the roots. It allows oxygen to get there. It forms these really strong root structures. Strong foundations on a house, for example. If the foundations on your house aren't strong, it's going to fall over, yeah. isn't it? It's really important to have strong foundations and, with your plants as well. And I was just thinking, and I know I've talked about climate change a couple of times today, but it does affect us gardeners, doesn't it? Of course it does. Everyone's been moaning about the rain. We've had a some of the wettest months in history but when a, a plant is strong with good roots it does cope far better with extremes so it copes better with disease it copes better with weather changes you know, really hot weather really wet weather a good root system gives it that support doesn't it yeah and this compost really allows your plants to develop great roots and then you get better shoots better fruits better flowers and everything else so we better tell you what's in it yeah so as i move through you'll be able to see there's loads of little green balls within that compost it's not just to make it pretty it's not just to make it decorative but those little green balls that you can see those are a slow release fertilizer they are a feed for your plants so that just releases that feed slowly over a period of five to six months feeding your plants as and when they need it I get really hungry hangry if I can't get fed when I want to be fed, oh my word, I'm in a right oh bad no. mood. It's the same for your plants. They, yeah. they definitely want a bit of feed when they need it, not just when we decide to do it. I mean, still give them a liquid feed rather yeah, than what they need, but that, that you know they've got food for five, six months. Brilliant. Then what we've got is, so there's peat in here. There's a few different types of peat. There's renewable peat. There's some that isn't renewable, but with that one, what we've done is we've reduced the content down. So we use the minimum, 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 minimum. <laughs> So take over, Bex. Minimum amount for maximum results. Great. <laughs> I could feel it happening. Uh, the minimum, minimum. Now on, you've also turn. got <laughs> what we call a, a pH buffer. Most plants like to be in a neutral soil that's just slightly acidic. So that's what the pH buffer does. And the only plants that are not suitable for this are those that love acid conditions like the, uh, yes, like the rhododendron, camellias, blueberries, things like that. Uh, but also, there is something I love in here, it's called a wetting agent, because I, I have to make about 25, 30 hanging baskets every year, and hanging baskets can dry out quite quickly, and there's nothing worse than a hanging basket drying out. Go into water, and all the water comes over the basket onto you. Have you ever had that? Yeah. Or with pots and it's really annoying. You're thinking, why is the water not going into the compost? The wetting agent makes that water stick to the compost. So that is one of my favorite, favorite things about this compost. Um, as we mentioned, different peats, 
all of that, the composted wood fiber, the pH buffer, the slow release fertilizer, the wetting agent, all of that, and years of perfecting that formulation and the amounts of those ingredients just make it the best compost you can imagine. So there's basically two composts that you need. There's this and there's the ericaceous yes. compost. You genuinely don't need anything else. And Peter McDermott, our head gardener, who's worked in horticulture all his life, this is the compost that he has formulated and chooses to use at his nursery where we grow plants. Yeah. That really should tell you something. But if you don't even believe us, check out all the reviews. There's yeah. hundreds of reviews on the website currently there right now. Over the years that oh. we've been bringing this compost to you. Yeah, and on thousands, different shopping channels as well. Thousands and thousands of people have reviewed um, this five star. Brilliant quality compost, great quality, uh, good service, speedy delivery, unbeatable prices. I mean, we're, we're just randomly selecting pages and, here, by the way. We haven't pre-checked uh, yeah. you know, these. Uh, right, a few things you also need to realise in terms of price. Delivery is included. Yes. Which is great. So you're not spending money on petrol. You're not having to drive to the garden centre. <laughs> if you are a club member, remember it's £5 for the year, you'll get it at 22.48 every time you order. So you save £2.50 every time you order the compost. But also your free gift today, that's Sarah Bernhardt, Bare Root. We, you'll know if you're a regular, we sold these at 9 9 10. We did do a double up. We did. Two for 14 98 That is the most beautiful peony. Rise as a bare root, all you need to do is give it a little soak for an hour or so, plant it in this compost in a pot or in the bed of border, and you're gonna get flowers like that year after year after year. Yeah. Uh, 101 to five. So the compost, actually, when you think about it, a 10 pound free gift, Bring down the price to 12.48 for 100 liters two big 50 liter bags amazing um now the lily bulbs Ooh, are the we... longiflorum white ones oh, yeah you're love loving them those. we both loved these didn't we yeah yeah they're really pretty they that... just i think white lilies are serene they're tasteful they're going to work with anything else in your beds and your borders. Um, but we are getting a bit of a surge on those. So it's 10 bulbs for £9.99. Or you can double up and go for 20 for just £14.98. And remember, each bulb will produce a stem covered in those absolutely divine lilies. Wine lilies, uh, so white lilies are one of my mum's favourites. Now, the reason why the word wine slipped out, I was, I was thinking about the next one, the Merlot, uh, because you're loving these as well. I'm so glad. I ordered uh, mine yesterday. Oh, look at that. Elaine wow. has got one. Look, that looks amazing. Elaine, that really looks good. Do you know what I love? The fact that Elaine has put some daffodils around them, so she's really bringing out the yellow. Yeah, yeah. that's gorgeous. Um, so all three of Best these... Picture. Yeah, we need one with flowers, don't we? Yeah. We've got Bex's and we've got Elaine's I'll now. I'll take more pictures as mine grow. Uh, so Euphorbia, um, I've got some in, in my garden right now, but they're not this variety. And they are easy, they are evergreen. Uh, they, I've pruned mine back a little bit at times, only the dead bits really, or the, the bits that have gone a bit straggly, a bit tatty in the winter months. They always flower kind of springtime, generally speaking, that's when they start to flower. They, I think they've got great structure and shape as well. Mine are in, mine are in kind of like semi-shade, dapple shade. And they do really, really nicely there. But um, love them. And really popular. Five to one, three, eight, six. Right, the Oleander, well done to everyone that's going for the buy one, get one free today. And just 26 99 if you are a club member. Or 29 99 if you're not. But it is a buy one, get one free by using that uh, code. Now, Alison has already got an Oleander. And she's brought it. She's been protecting these over the winter. So they are... They are hardy to minus five. When they're bigger, they'll get even hardier. And she's just um, she's just taken off their little fleeces. So in colder areas, you might need to give them that a bit of protection. But how healthy do they look? They look amazing. It looks like she's got them in our little Tuscany pots as well. Yes, she has. She has, doesn't she? They are beautiful. And, and look I, at all that, those I, pots in the background as well. I know, you've got all the hyacinths going on there. There's the another tower tulips. pot. I can see tower pots in the background there too. Yeah. And I, I think she's got some uh, Trachis burnum jasmine there by the looks of things in the tower pots. Yeah. Yeah. Heavy duty pots there as well to the side. Look. God. Love it. Right, so anyway. Love seeing your gardens. Ah, oh, we do. Really, really like it. 
you know what? I'm normally posting a lot of pictures of my garden, but I'll, I'll let you into secret. It's not looking its best right now, but I've got three days off after today. <laughs> so I, so I'm going to make, I mean, my greenhouse is looking great, but my garden, there's a, there's a lot to do. Yeah. So um, I've got half term to deal with. I'm not sure how much, term, how much oh, time I'm going to get in the garden. I think you should just escape from the kids and spend all your time in the garden. <laughs> they're, old, they're old enough to do their own thing now, aren't they? Yeah, just crack on. Off I'm really joking. <laughs> um, but yeah, I, mean, I can't wait to get out in the garden. There's quite a bit of sun around this week as well. Yeah. There's still a bit of rain, but it's, it's definitely better. Right, uh, very busy now. Loads of orders coming in. Get your oleanders. Do you know what? I don't want you to pay six nine nine postage. So get your order to over £40 pounds and we'll take that off. In fact... Get some pots. Yeah, why not? We've got a we've got a great selection of pots. In actual fact, um, and Stu's just said he wants yeah. to show these. Ones. Now these are too small for your oleanders. Yeah, but, but these are great if you need to tip your basket over that forty pound yeah. mark. Because this is is this the most affordable item? Yeah, it's buy is, one get two free as well, isn't it? So. Um, do you know what these are? Do you know what I think it'd be nice in these bags? Do you know what I'm thinking? I know oh. you'd have to you'll have to grow them on a bit, but I oh, think yeah. I think those those busy lizzies could look really pretty in those because the glimmers, don't you? Yeah, totally. Yeah, I'd probably put. How many would you put? Two. I see. I like to do I like to do odd numbers, so I but two would be okay. Two would be fine. Yeah, I two think. would fill it. And also they're just going to meander in together, yeah, you're right. so I don't think yeah. you need that. No, two, two odd planting. You're right. Two would be fine in those, and then, then you got yeah. Two, four, six. Yeah, and there what I do if you want to plant them up now, you could put, you could put your busy leaves straight in them, but just protect them from frost, right? Yeah, just keep yeah. them indoors. Obviously, they've got the drainage holes on the bottom, so make sure that you put something underneath it so water doesn't run out. If you know, if you're putting it on win on windowsills or something, but that's great that you've got those lovely and lots of drainage holes. You've got channels there for the water to drain away from. I think this is a really, really good deal because it's a buy one get two free. Look at that! Look at that club price. That bags. is amazing. Three pound fifty nine. It's one pound and twenty pence per pot. Check out my maths. One pound and 20 pence per pot if you are in the club. Well worth multi-ordering there. That was good maths. <laughs> Thank you very much. It's uh, actually one pound 19 and two thirds actually. Ah, whatever. <laughs> um, but if you want to multi-order these, if you want to create those displays where you've got <laughs> steps and you can have them down the side or you've got those you step could. ladders and you can put them on there, it'd look absolutely beautiful. They're great. And you will get, as we've said, your free peony worth 9.99. Yep. So put one in your basket, yeah. enter the code, and we'll put two more in your basket. Put two in your basket, enter the code, we'll put four more in your basket. That's how that's going to work. Yeah. Brilliant. Uh, right, we've got some more pots for you. Uh, where should we go next? I Whatever you want. I love the... I love the Diablo, but these Eclipse would be lovely for the clematis we've got. Yeah, the Boulevard clematis collection will work perfectly for these. Now, um, these are a double up deal, I want to say. So if you want yeah. one for each, you are going to need to get four of these. Um, if you want one for each of the Boulevard patio clematis collection, then, then just get two lots of these. But these are going to work perfectly because the Boulevard patio yeah. clematis doesn't get massive. It'll just it'll meander and climb around this and You'll just get a beautiful ball of colour at the top And we top should there. say the top does, does unclip as well. <coughs> so if you've got climbing things in the summer and, and then you want to, you know, there's not that many climbers that you get in the winter that are in flower and stuff, they do come off as well. So you can just use the pot by itself yeah, if you absolutely. want to. Yeah, absolutely. And again, these are on uh, run down. Yeah, clearance. <laughs> So these are not going to come back. So these are a really good one to get hold of because they're basically on sale. You'll get the best prices right now because we are, you know, clearance prices. Yeah. Uh, right. Also, can we talk about the two pots at the front? <laughs> Sorry, because I love these pots. I think and, they're really stunning, and, aren't they? And would you know, we nearly bought, both of us nearly bought them when they first came out. Uh, but we thought, but they, they were 29 pounds on each. And then, then we did an offer twenty four ninety nine for one. And we're like, mm, shall we, shan't we? <laughs> Today, and again, these are um, clearance. They are not coming back. You can double up and go for two for twenty seven ninety nine, fourteen pounds each. And the good thing is they're thirty six centimeters, so you can get a lot in here. Mm. Um, one of the advantages of buying bigger pots is they need a, a little bit less care, less watering and things. Obviously, smaller pots you've really got to keep your eye on. But we've got two of the oleanders in there, and Craig, who puts our uh, plants together for us, he just put some winter bedding, some pansies, some peris in there, some vinca by the looks of things, a few little ferns. Yeah, vinca. Absolutely gorgeous. Yeah, they do look really, really beautiful. I think I'm going to get hold of these because I need to repot my cypress 
uh, conifers, you know, the column conifers. Oh, they're nice. They're, they're beautiful. So yeah. I have those for outside the front of the house. Um, but at the minute they're in quite shallow round pots. They need potting on. So I'm thinking about going for the square pots because then also there's a bit more space for me to underplant around the conifers as well. Great so that's idea. why I'm thinking about getting but these But if mine. you want those pots, you think, oh, I like those. I, and you're thinking, do I need two, do I need four? Get them today because when they're gone, they're gone. And you'd be really annoyed if you buy a pair and they think, oh, I should have got some more, and they're not available. So workout is £14 each, fully foster proof, UV resistant. They should last two years. They're pretty much indestructible. It's really hard to break those. Yeah, they're really, really quite yeah. sturdy, but lightweight because they're plastic, UV stabilized, frost resistant, designed to last for a lot of years. There is good plastic. In, mm, there's really bad plastic, that single use stuff, and there's some good stuff, the stuff that's going to last yeah. you for years and that's exactly what you're getting with those. I mean, I've still got a few um, ceramic and resin pots in my garden. Yeah, I and have. And do you know what's annoying, though? When I need to move them around, <laughs> I've, I've got to... I've got, got, got to ask my other half, you know? I've got like, Jay, I need to move that... They're like... Oh, not doing that, too busy. It's like, no, I need to move that pot now. But seriously, I've still got a few pots that I need moving and I've not done it yet because they're too heavy. Yeah. But those, obviously, are a lot more lightweight. Absolutely gorgeous. In the clearance, when they're gone, they go 130-391. Grab those now. Uh, Nicola said they're really classy. Thank you so much. They Which are, are, aren't they? She doesn't talk about us, the pots. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh. I don't think anyone's ever called I've a classic. I was just about to say exactly the same thing. <laughs> I don't think I've ever been called that before. No, I haven't. No, I've definitely nobody's ever referred to me as classy. I've maybe. Um, maybe said I'm, ironically, it's been said you're classy, you aren't you? <laughs> you have never been called no, classy. Never. I'm all right with it. It's There's fine. still time. <laughs> Could happen. Not going to happen, is it? No, but the pots, you're right, they are yeah, classy. They are. Thank you, Nicola. Oh, geez, some people have said my garden looks classy, so that'll do. Yeah. That's all I care about. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but those pots, you are right, they are really, really good. Dead classy, then. Dead classy. Dead classy. Yeah, I'm a northern lad, by the way. <laughs> uh, right, we love the tower pots and so do you. Do you know what? I think one of the best designs ever, and I mean, Bex, you've got more of these than me. You've got four. I've got four yeah. now, um, and I absolutely adore them. I just think it's an incredibly clever system yeah. for anything that climbs. You know, wisterias, clematis, um, <laughs> not monkeys, no. <laughs> anything that climbs. <laughs> Any plant that climbs. <laughs> Clematis, oh. wisteria, jasmine, um, my sweet peas, you know, uh, maybe some green uh, green beans, you know, yeah. red beans, sorry. Anything that climbs will grow perfectly in here. So it's not just about flowers. If you've got um, climbing fruits and, and grow your own, it's brilliant. The reason I love it, or several reasons, first of all, it's made of that plastic again. So this is lightweight. It's easy to move around the garden. If something's looking good, I can easily, so I, even with compost and my wisteria, yeah. I can still pick this up and move it around the garden. If it's looking good, I bring it out in pride of place. If it's gone over, if it's not looking great, I can quickly hide it around the side of the house. Nobody needs to see yeah. that. But I mean, old plants have their, their yeah, times where they look great and not so good. But I love it, it's at 360 degrees. Yeah. Look, you know, that's um, Bex's wisteria there. Totally. But imagine when that's in flower. Oh, I can't wait. I I'm mean, going to do another picture later on in the year. That is going to look incredible, isn't it? It will do, absolutely. But 360 degree is the display you get from this. So, you know, if you're looking at it from one side of the garden it looks great if you look yeah. at it from the other side of the garden you can get your hands into these holes to be able to assist the plant right. if necessary Do you know what i'm thinking so i've, I've I, i'm growing sweet peas as well this year mine are a little bit behind we're having a um, little competition yeah <laughs> <laughs> I'm winning right now, but only because I've planted, you've Yay! literally just planted yours. That's yeah, the only I've, reason I've, I'm winning I've, at the I have just planted right. But do you know what? I'm, my mum lives in a little old cottage and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get her two of these because she hasn't got these and I'm going to give her some of my sweet peas. Yeah, and grow the sweet peas up them. Yeah, and they will look absolutely amazing. They will. But the price on that today, it's a double up deal. We've sold that for a lot more, I will be honest. Two for 39 .98. So it works out 19 .99 each. Yeah which is an amazing price. And they do look great in pairs. 
So, and you've got this for years. I mean, if not decades. Yeah, they will. They yeah. will last a long time. That's how it comes to you, by the way. So it's all separated. These bits here, um, they're on each of the sections. And what they do is they just clip into each other. It's very quick and easy to do. They just simply click into each other. Yeah. Of course, if you're using it for sweet peas like I am, which are going to last for the summer, uh, and then I'm not using it anymore, I can then either take it down and store it away, or I can use the pot at yeah. the bottom for I mean, some the winter bedding then. The, the pot's actually really nice, isn't it? Just by itself. But it's a really clever set. I love the kind of fact that it's got this, I want to say shabby chic It's got look. this brushed kind yeah. of goldy, champagne colour to it. So what? So my wisteria, which obviously is deciduous, um, you know, you can see all the... the, 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 the... <laughs> oh. Word you're looking I for just now? lost my word. The stems, oh. uh, the bare stems are running around it, but you can yeah. pretty much see the majority of the pot. It still looks attractive, even when you've got a deciduous yeah. plant in there. They are just fantastic. <laughs> what word are you looking for now? <laughs> well, I was thinking it's either leaf, stem, or flower. That's one of them. Uh, and you I know, there's wrong. a point you reach, particularly at my age. You know, it's the big M, uh, where words just drop out of your head. I've they got, just I, I'm, fall out. And Bex has got a later show at nine on QVC. I'm seriously worried. <laughs> you know what I'm talking about, don't you? <laughs> the great thing is we are like, an, know, own we are like an old married couple. So normally <laughs> if Bex is looking for word, I fill in and vice versa. It just falls out sometimes. Um, Sorry. But seriously, grab those today. Um, what's a shame is you go for two, it's just slightly under £40. So you... So, do you know what? Yes, here's a good idea. If, there they are. If you just buy the towel pots today and you don't want to pay postage, add the Torino pots in and the postage will be free. It would be cheaper money. than paying the postage, basically, and you'll get some really useful little pots to use. Yeah, and actually those two do work pretty well together. They do. So there's that basket just to show you. Two of them, 19.99 each. Put one of those in at 3.99. Once you enter the code, those two free um, pots appear, and you get your free Sarah Bernhardt peony as well. And that is a no good. No post. That is a good there. basket, isn't Stu, it? Stu, I was just going to say, take them out to show them the difference. But no, it's fine. You're, you're not paying. Yeah, look. Can you see the difference now on the side? Look, delivery yeah. cost is there. You're paying. It just makes sense. Add them in. Yeah, it's a great basket that one. Fantastic. Right, uh, we are having a lovely show. Thank you so much. Right, come on, John, has got summer bedding now. Do you know, this is how I get really excited. I think, I think out of all the, gardening is, is such a, it's such a huge subject, isn't it, gardening? It is. Um, and there are certain things that we know more about than others. And for me, summer bedding is, it's probably what I know most about because for, for years I've, I've, looked after the pub garden. My mum's always grown loads of, of, of pots with summer bedding. I've had quite a lot of smaller gardens and balconies over the years. So again, it's been all about the pots and summer bedding. Yeah. Um, so when I see summer bedding, it just, oh, it melts my heart. And, and I love some of the new varieties we've got. And then some of the, the, the real kind of classics that we've got as well. And the Begonia Sahara, this is, a, this is a, what I call a classic. Um, what probably the one of the most resilient bedding plants to grow because it is weather resistant. It doesn't matter if it pours down, doesn't matter if it's really sunny, but we do do different sizes of plugs. And these are the most affordable plugs we do. We call they're called pro plugs. You get 40 of them and all you want to do, give them a good water and you can either, you can either literally just water the whole thing or you could take them out individually and water them. I always use a stick to get them out. Do you use, do you, do you squeeze? squeeze. So you have I to generally have a, squeeze and that releases them personally, you but you know, it's up to you the way you want to do it. And all you need to do, you do need to obviously grow them on, but you will be amazed how quickly these grow at this time of year because we are getting 12 hours daylight, temperatures are rising. You can either grow those in nine centimetre pots. I love the, we call it a windowsill propagation kit that is on our website. And for this size of plug, it is brilliant. And actually, it will hold 90 plants. So just type in a uh, windowsill propagator kit. Bex, in fact, window gets you there if you just put in window. That's what it looks like. Yeah, so you get three trays. There's the bottom tray there, which is what um, that sits on your windowsill. Because that hasn't got holes in it, which is great. And then you get these little pods in the top here. Actually, we've left some yeah. compost in there. That's right, yeah, I, I just got a bit. So there you go, literally. 
just pop them in those, like so. I'm being really quite gentle. Give it another good water. So you see that, and there's a lid that goes on top, isn't there? Yeah, so yeah. Uh, you get three of them. It's space for 90 plants to go in, yeah. plus you get the lids to go on. You probably wouldn't need the, uh, the lids for your begonia saharas to go on there. But those are the lids there as well. Yeah. And I've used these. This is what I grew my sweet peas in, and they're fantastic and they've for done these really well. Really well. So that's, uh, you know, not everyone is lucky enough to have a greenhouse, but that's like having a little greenhouse in your home. Look how dinky they are. I know. Are. And the pleasure you'll get growing those and see them thrive. Love and that. Gorgeous. Yeah. So they're the most affordable. Um, sun, bit of shade, they're fine. They don't mind if you forget to water them <coughs> for a few days. They don't mind if it pulls down. And they're often using commercial displays because of their resilience, really, to different weather conditions. And lovely bronze leaves, lovely green leaves, <laughs> um, red, pink, and white. Right. Can I move on to? I'll tidy up next. You made a mess. Uh, I, have, I love these, though, don't you, Bex? <coughs> yeah, the um, oh. Glimmer Collection, the Busy Lizzies. Busy oh. Lizzies, we love Busy Lizzies. They're a real favourite in this country, aren't well, they? You, I used to have it as a houseplant as a child. Yeah. Do you remember? Yeah. We don't do that now, I don't know why, but we, yeah. We used to have them as houseplants. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, but they, they work beautifully. They're called busy lizzies because they're constantly busy. There's constantly flowers on a really long flowering season. But these are super, super easy to look after. They don't mind a bit of shade. They can cope with the, the sun as well. But they actually are incredibly beautiful, this Glimmer collection. They are doubles. So yeah. what they actually look like are mini roses. You know the patio standard roses? They, they, you yes. get these so, lovely yeah. little, little roses on there. They remind me of those because you get clusters of them and loads and loads and of them all the way through the summer, right through to the first frosts. And this variety you are not just going to find easily in the garden centres and the supermarkets. No. You really are. I mean, it's been really popular, actually, and the double-up deal is, is the best value where you get uh, two lots of the plugs for $14.98. Um, but I, again, I, I often grow uh, busy lizzies in slightly shady areas and they do great so if you've got if you if you maybe got a hanging basket that doesn't get full sun all day that only gets a certain amount of sun and light these would be absolutely superb and great in pots in, we all have those most of us have got those little shady areas or yeah slightly, of course yeah but they are delicate, they are divine. So I'm going to be getting these for my mum. I know she'll absolutely love them. Mm. These are bigger plugs. So this is the next size that we do. And that could go straight in a nine centimetre pot. Just keep them frost free. I will be honest, busy lizzies are one of the most tender of bedding plants. Some bedding plants don't mind a light frost. Busy lizzies really don't like any frost. Yeah, they're not going to want it, but they will no. give you some of the most top oh. performance throughout the summer months. They really are quite robust and durable yeah. once we get past those frosts. And just so many flowers for such a long time. <gasps> Oh, I'm just so excited. <laughs> I, really, I am, I am. I'm like, oh, I can't wait to get started. We I, do have a double I've, up deal available I have got on a ridiculous well. amount of plug plants in my greenhouse right now, but there's still room. <laughs> there's, right. There's always room. Um, I love this little section here. It's really good, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, look at these. Calabracoa, mini petunias, double flowers on here. A gorgeous selection of colours included as well. I just, I mean, I love the bi colours, but I, I think that the, the collection has been put together to work beautifully together, hasn't it? You know, if you wanted to plant all of these oh, it definitely in work. a mixture together, they would look absolutely gorgeous. But um, equally, if you just want to, I said earlier, if you're putting together a, a hanging basket, you can get away with putting some quite ordinary plants in there, like yeah. your, your lobelia your geraniums and things but just one or two of these in there will really make it look quite special and magical I definitely thought. definitely I adore look at those <laughs> they're, they're very the easy to look after I mean we do I mean I think deadheading would help but actually what we say about these is they're pretty much self-cleaning that they will sort of deadhead themselves I just enjoy deadheading calabracoa and petunia it's one of my favorite jobs to do don't know why love it yeah, but I... they're bright they're beautiful you're going to get so many flowers on there they are slightly smaller aren't they yes your they are petunia flowers but you get lots of them. But I like the fact that you've got some um, bicolours on here. I mean, yeah, again, look beautiful. at them. They're going to want feeding, though. That's the only other thing that we'll tell you about Calabracoa. They are quite hungry. Yeah. So do to, make sure you keep up your feeding so that you get lots and lots of flowers. To be fair, I'd say all the uh, summer, summer bedding we've bedding. got. Yeah, yeah you're All right. of it would, would, would really benefit from a weekly feed without blooming totally. fast. Totally. But I, um, yeah, I love those. Uh, they are they're the double collection because they're all doubles. You can get single Calabracoa. These are doubles and they are, some of them are bicolour. They are extraordinary. I've never seen that collection before, you know. No, I think yeah, that's new, new to this me year. as well, yeah. yeah. Well done, the U Garden team. Well done. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, 
let's be honest, you, you, we've got lots of bedding plants that are more affordable, but those are extraordinary. So if you just if you can just splash out a few lovely, quite unusual bedding yeah, plants. Yeah, it's quite important to do, isn't it? I think of course, so. get your firm favourites and you know cost saving ones and all the rest yeah. of it. You need a couple of special ones. You know, there's always there's a fillers like your lobelia, blue white lobelia. They're they're fillers. I aren't love they? them. I love them. Uh, in fact, did you do a whole basket? I did a you? whole pot. I did two whole pots of them on their own, yeah, and so they were knockout. I'm going to try uh, that this year. Honestly, well, when we talk, when we bring you Lobelia, I'll talk about it then. Yeah, but my, my my mum likes mixed hanging baskets, and as I say, a few of those in with other uh, other uh, slightly more ordinary bedding plants, it just livens the whole thing up. But well done if you got all of those. Right. Strolch. Yeah, no, it's been really wet, and now I'm pointing out the obvious. <laughs> <laughs> it's you're like. Of course yeah, it's sure. been wet, we Sean. <laughs> Tell me something I don't know. But the point I'm going to make is the slugs and snails have loved the wet. Of course they have. Yeah. Now, there's been quite a lot in the news about how important it is to have slugs and snails in our garden. We know that. Yeah. So we don't want to kill them, but we don't want them to be eating our plants no, either. There's a big thing in the RHS, actually. Yeah. I got my magazine the other day, and there's a big thing in there, isn't there, about yeah. slugs and snails? Yeah. Um, and we want to keep them in our gardens. It's really They're important. very, very important. Yeah. It's incredibly important. It's something that we say all the time when we talk to you about strolch, in fact. There are no poisons, there are no pellets, but they just don't like this stuff. So, this is the sort of thing that you put around those plants that they like to munch on. Strawberries, they love to munch on new delphiniums, they love the new yeah. growth from those. Um, there's lupins, yeah, absolutely. They love the new growth on those. Marigolds, I've had marigolds literally vanish overnight. Yeah. And I'm thinking, you know, you're thinking. See, see, marigolds will attract the um, ladybirds, won't they? And the ladybirds will eat the aphids and all the rest of it, but they also attract the slugs yeah. and the snails. Um, hostas, my word. If you, hostas can just be absolutely demolished overnight if you've got slugs. But this is a brilliant, brilliant it's solution. It's so good, but it's not just about slugs and snails. Obviously, we're trying to keep the slugs and snails away, but this has multiple uses, doesn't it? It can help to suppress weeds. So you'll go around, you do your weeding, you put a layer of this down. It'll help to stop so many weeds coming through because that's a pain in the bum job is to do isn't it it also works as a mulch we've been talking a lot about a few plants that might be a little bit tender over the winter so probably not highly on your mind at the moment but it works as a duvet to keep them nice and, and, and warm during those winter months it neatens up borders yeah as well. and it really does i mean look that looks so nice though, doesn't it totally and then as we started by saying there are no poisons there are no, no pellets it's organic um, it's the best way to keep those slugs and snails away without causing Damage and it is effective for a good couple of years, but when when uh, it's it's sort of like past its its uh, working efficiency, just mix that into your soil and it gives it great structure it does, as well. Yeah. And also there are many. <sighs> There are many plants that, that benefit from having more moisture. I'm thinking things like we had the raspberries that Alwyn showed us uh, earlier. Yeah. yeah. So sometimes great as a mulch, helping to retain moisture as well. Totally. Dahlias. Yeah. Need to make sure. So they're fine in the in the conservatory at the moment. The slugs and snails aren't getting to my dahlias at the moment. But at some point when they go outside, mm. I'm going to be putting strolch around those. Uh, postage is included on that one, by the way. And you get two big, large, nine kilo bags for £36.97, and pence. so that is 100, 149. Uh, right, keep those emails and coming in, by the way, don't forget if you want to be part of the show, there you go, boom, that's how good we are. Uh, <laughs> YGTV <laughs> at yougarden.com. <laughs> yes, Sue, you, might, you, you will get to see Stu at some point. Is that video not ready? Is the YouTube video not ready, Stu? I'm it's on YouTube. A, I'm going to get a photo of him and can't stick you just it show a little? Can't you just show a bit of it so they know who you are? Because we're oh, just talking to ourselves, oh, aren't we? Listen to him. Oh. So Stu is in charge of all the technical. He is a bit of a genius, isn't he? So he, he does. Uh, like some studios, they have somebody operating the cameras, somebody operating the lights, somebody operating audio, somebody operating graphics. He does it all. A producer, somebody talking to us, telling us what to do. A director, get the cameras the out. He does it all. He's only got three buttons. No, he hasn't. So he does it all. Um, He's got way more buttons. And, and one of the things that's been really nice, you know, we are we are just in a potting shed in a nursery, but we say, get so many lovely compliments about how it looks, how the show looks, um, which is lovely. And it's amazing we do this from the nursery, mm. but we love it because it's real. We're not in a 
posh fancy studio, which, yep. we, which we love as well, obviously, you know, that's nice. That's, we, you know, we do love that as well. But when we're here, it's just real. And uh, it's, it's, yeah, it's, it's just such a we lovely place to be. We can walk out the doors and we are on the nursery floor where yeah. it, it, it is beautiful, honestly, yeah. it really is. And we can, and I've got it. Just here come he on, I'm going to show us Stu a picture of you. There he is! <laughs> you see, you can tell Stu's bright, can't you? you can. I think you can. But um, there's, a, there's a video that's put on YouTube <laughs> about how to, to watch us on your main TV, on your big telly, basically. So, so if, you're, if you're currently watching us on a, a phone or a tablet, something like an iPad, and you're thinking, oh, I wish they were on the telly, because I sometimes get messages you on social yeah, media. Yeah. Oh, I love the show, but I wish you were on the telly. You <laughs> so you can watch us on your big TV as long as it's a smart TV connected to the internet. So if you've got Netflix on there, for example, uh, iPlayer, Anything ITVX, like that. Disney. Yeah. Any of those, you'll then, be able to get YouTube on there. So there's a video on YouTube uh, telling you how you can watch us on your smart TV. But basically, go on YouTube, on your TV, find the app, type in New Garden, and all the shows come up. Yeah, it's really good. Yeah. So there you go. But that's you. That's the man behind the scenes. That is the man behind the scenes telling us what to do, getting annoyed when we don't He's do it. He's actually a really good presenter as well, so one day he'll just be doing it all. <laughs> no, don't, don't say that. <laughs> yeah. I won't have a job left. I know. Right, <laughs> let's, uh, let's move on to uh, the Oleanders, though, because these are a buy one, get one free today. Uh, and they are just extraordinary value, but they are beautiful specimens of plants. So um, just to recap, these are on the nursery right now. We, I think we've got, we had a stock of about 10,000, and that's for the whole summer. And... This is the best price we have done. Buy one, get one free. Loads of orders coming in for these. It's a Mediterranean plant. So you will have seen these. Maybe without even knowing, but if you've been to France, Spain, Italy, America, you will have seen these in those hot countries. The great news is you can grow them very successfully in the UK. They are highly to minus five. So most parts of the UK, they should be fine on a normal winter. If it's a little bit colder, put a fleece around them, put them in the greenhouse, uh, put them in your potting shed or if you haven't got anywhere to put them do you know what sometimes just moving them against the wall of your house can increase the temperature by one or two degrees which is enough for them to actually survive uh, a cold winter but uh, just a fleece over these would, would also help massively they love they're like you Bex they love sun they do they want a full sun position try, try not to shoehorn them into some kind of um, you know shady spot because you just you won't get the flowers no you won't they need the heat they need the sunshine and they will give you the most delightful displays all summer long of these beautifully sweetly scented gorgeous pink flowers but then of course when the flowers fade after the frost and we are talking a long flowering time oh, they're yeah. ready now and they'll keep going right the way through to October so what's that six months, six months. at least and you will still have that beautiful foliage on here all the way through the winter and it is very very easy to look after they do thrive on neglect so barring maybe a little bit of um, you know maybe winter protection they really don't need yeah. a huge amount and, you and might I, want to trim off a few of the faded flowers that'll encourage new ones to come through but other than that leave them alone just let them do their thing and you know, I used to split live and it, so I'd spend half a week in, in Peterborough half a week in Leeds and then sometimes Sometimes I wouldn't be able to go back to these, whatever. And if you're someone that, that isn't able to look at after your plants all day long, yeah, perfect. If you go, if you, if I mean, a friend of mine last year said, I'm not bothering with bedding this year because I've got a holiday planned. I thought it was so sad. Yeah, for a two week holiday, yeah. you don't get it for the entire. So I'm not bothering with, and, and, I, and, and I remember saying to her, I said, look, there are some plants that you can, like geraniums, they're fine in drought. These are fine in drought. So, as we say, we love that expression, thrive on neglect. They are not needy. They're not going to be... I wish I thrived on neglect. I'm a bit more... I mean, I'm not completely needy, but I need... I don't think you're needy. I'm a little bit needy. No, I'm no needy. Don't neglect me. <laughs> but neglect them. Well, don't neglect them deliberately. But <laughs> no, they, but they're fine if you do. Um, right, bit. very important. Don't eat any part of your oleander. Uh, and that applies to humans and all pets as well. There are many, you know, there are many plants you'll learn in your garden that you've got to be a bit careful with. Absolutely. Um, right. I've got a few things to bring up. We're, in, few, oh. we're getting into our last sort of 25 yeah. minutes. So I'm going to do a table change. You're going to remind everybody of what we've seen. I am. I'd love to, because we've got some great plants, haven't we? <laughs> um, quick reminder, I know you all know this probably, postage is 6 99 per order. But if you spend over £40, it is free. So if, you, if you're thinking, oh... 
got a little basket together and it's £32. We'll have a triangle, it's over £40 and it's free delivery. Love that. Your free gift today is the Sarah Bernhardt pin. It's worth £9, £99. It's yeah. a gorgeous peony, free with every order. And if you placed an order yesterday and you place another order today, or maybe you placed an order an hour ago, and now you've seen the oleanders and go, oh, I want those as well, you get your free gift with every separate order. And we've got a new free gift coming next week, haven't we? Yeah. Hey, let's play a game when you come back, Bex. We'll give you a little clue. We'll, we'll do like, we'll give you a few little... Yeah, because I don't know what it is. Do you not? I don't know what it is. Oh, I do. Oh, you you'll be no, you'll be I, no good, I, I don't know. Uh, it's green, and it's not a plant. It's quite big. <gasps> I do know what it is. I know what it is. They were talking about it yesterday. I do know what it is. What do you think the, the free gift is next week? It's green, it's big, and it's not a plant. <laughs> the Hulk. <laughs> no, it's not the Hulk. I'm I was wanted, I was wanted to look like the Incredible Hulk, you know. Did you? Yeah, not the green bit. Not but <laughs> the bot uh, anyway, let's remind you of what we've had on the show today. <laughs> right, you've absolutely loved our lilies, and these are the Longiflorum Lily White Heaven. What a, what a, do you know you've got great taste if you've gone for these. I think they are just divine. They're quite serene looking. I always think with the white in a garden, it makes all the other colours pop out. So you actually get 10 of these, or you can double up and get 20. They, each one of those bulbs will produce a, a lovely stem covered in flowers. And lilies are so hard, you know, generally speaking, they come back year after year after year. Um, I remember the first time I saw white lilies uh, in London in, in my 20s uh, in a friend's house in a vase. I just was mesmerised by their beauty. But very easy to grow, sunny spot, well drained. They pretty much look after themselves and they don't need support. Generally speaking, lilies don't need lots of canes and support as well. So they're actually, uh, they just look perfect there, don't they? Really popular, 650-019. Now, um, I always have a little shopping list in my head and these are on there right now. The Hydrangeas Paniculata, Diamond Rouge. So um, the breeding in the last several years with Hydrangeas has been extraordinary. There's so many new varieties, particularly like the Paniculatas. So these are the kind of cone-shaped flowers. So not the mop heads, these are cone shapes. And you get lovely colours on here that, that, that change as the flowers mature. So creams and raspberries and reds and pinks, absolutely stunning. They flower on New Year's, uh, on the new growth each year. So you can actually, if they ever get too big, you can actually quite hard prune them. But yours will take, yours are gonna arrive in three, nine centimeters pots. So they will take a few years to establish, but you may well get flowers in the first year as well. Just keep them nice and mo moist, uh, not waterlogged, but they are hydrangeas. They like water, of course. And I think do well in sort of part sun, not, not, not too much shade but not in baking sun either, because that can cause them to dry out, but very easy to grow and absolutely beautiful. Oh, would make a great cup flower as well. 1997, 511421. Oh, uh, then, right, something that I haven't grown, table is, and you might be thinking, I've never seen the table in the supermarket. The reason being, they don't transport well. I think they're just too soft. So raspberries aren't great, actually, are they? If you think about raspberries, they often go to mush quite quickly. Um, these, these are like a raspberry, but it's like a raspberry mixed with a blackberry. So they're bigger fruits and they're kind of elongated, but from everything that I've heard and read, the taste is absolutely delicious on these. And it's only 7.99 as well. It's already quite big as well in a 1.7 litre pot. 310062. Likes to be well watered and likes sun, of course. All, all soft fruits, a bit much like full sun. Then we've got our Lupin Gallery Collection. My word, these are just stunning colours, aren't they? That one is amazing. Then you've got the white, there's a little bit limey there as well before the flowers come out. And then you've got the bicolour with the blue and the white as well. Now, these are a bit more compact than your regular Lupin, so only go to about 60 centimetres. Very easy to grow. They do die down during the winter, so don't, don't panic when they disappear. They just have a sleep underground in the winter time. They start to reappear. I mean, my lupins are all coming back to life now. I've got lots of green growth coming, and they are gonna flower in the summer months. 
and quite often they will repeat flower as well so if you take off the dead stems very often you will get new flowers later on in the year as well absolutely amazing value as well 497-560-709 and then don't forget Get your compost today. We are giving you two 50 litre bags at 24.98. Uh, the cup price is 22.48. And you will get your free Sarah Burnout opinion. But I'll tell you what, rather than me talk about the compost, let's get our head gardener, Peter McDermott, to tell you a little bit more. We describe this as premium professional compost. And the reason for that is it is the compost that is known, this formula we have perfected over decades. So I've been using it for decades. We have perfected it over decades. You've got a blend of the best peats plus wood fiber that you can imagine. Now by volume, approximately 50% of this compost is wood fiber and the balance is made up of a blend of peats, and there are three different peats. So you've got things like sphagnum moss peat, which is renewable, you've got sedge peat, and, and then you've got darker sphagnum as well in there. So you've got three different peats. You've also got, you can see actually just there, they're slow release fertilizer. These little green, what look like little eggs, you'll see those dotted among the compost when you're planting it. That's slow release fertilizer. One of the most expensive ingredients in any compost is fertilizer. You can see that there's another one just down below. Um, that is amazing because that will deploy nutrients to the roots of whatever you grow in this compost just when they need it over the next six months. You then got what's called a buffer. Now, peat in particular is naturally acidic. So, and plants like to be just on the acidic side of neutral as a generality. There are exceptions, so things like rhododendrons and azaleas, they love to be properly um, acidic in terms of the, the, the ericaceous soil or compost they're growing in. But most things like it just on the slightly acidic edge of, of neutral. So um, that's what this is designed to give you. So it's got a pH buffer to keep it in exactly that zone. The wood fiber keeps the sort of perfect air water porosity ratio which is what we talk about in the trade, all these complicated terms. But, but, but it's, what plants need is they need, they, need, they need a jungle gym to grow in. So they need a jungle gym for their roots, which is called growing medium. They need some water and they need some air and they need nutrients. And, and when you've got the perfect compost, it blends the air and the water and the constituents of the compost. It all blends together to give the perfect environment. That's what this particular compost does, which is why it's trusted by us. We will be growing approximately 150,000 potted roses on this nursery this year. That's roughly what we grow most years. We'll be growing, I don't know how many hanging baskets, but our pre-planted hanging baskets that will be available later, you will have bought them in the autumn and last spring as well. They grow in this compost. We will grow countless perennials, whether they be in the nine centimetre square pots or the three litre pots or the five litre pots, plus fruit trees. And this is the compost we use for all of those things. So we trust it, the trade trusts it. And actually based upon the, the well, literally hundreds and hundreds of thousands of, of bags of this particular compost that you've bought over the years, you definitely trust it as well. And, um, you know, and, and, and actually, Pete, is a is a thing we need to think about pete not me i, I happen to also be pete but it's yes, the pete that's in here that, we, that we're talking about um we can still use pete in our gardens right now and actually the alternatives generally speaking are a bit iffy so if you want to get the best results in my view use this particular compost for as long as you can it's got 50 percent other material in it which is the lowest level we could get to and still have a professional quality product for you and for ourselves so we've been as eco-friendly as we can and we jumped onto that particular mm. uh, that approach years and years and years ago so this is the same formulation that we've had for at least the last six or seven years with 50 percent um, other material to bulk out the peat and it worked it still works better so i would say this is in my yeah. opinion it's the only compost i use at home it's the compost we use on the nursery I can't recommend it highly enough. Yeah. So that was our wonderful head gardener, Peter McDermott, with a very strange man with a ginger beard. Uh, right, <laughs> very important, free postage on all orders over £40. Have most people spent over £40 today? About 50%, I think. He's not talking to me. Yeah. Oh, um... Anyway, it doesn't, it doesn't um, matter, but... Um, it's the answer. Just bear in mind, it's 6 99 per order. 
uh, but most of you have spent over £40 pounds and avoided paying postage. So I know not everyone has a budget every time spent no, over £40. Pounds, completely understand. But we and have got... Can. Yeah, and things like compost pots. Yeah, those Torino pots, which are yeah. buy one, get two free. That's a really good way of tipping your order over. And this is the last week to get the Sarah Bernhardt free gift. We've got something green, big, and very useful coming up as your free Not gift next plan. week. Not a plan, yeah. All right, so this is the last, uh, say, week to get your said Bernhardt. Comes as bare root, worth 9.99. And imagine, I mean, imagine in a few years' time when this is covered in flowers, and you think that was free. Yeah, absolutely. For a complete freebie, something that's going to last in your garden for decades. Yeah. Peonies are incredibly long lived perennial plants, and the flowers are some of the most highly anticipated when it comes to their flowering season. They're really expensive as a cut flower, but because this is a free gift, if you place multiple orders and got a couple of these, you'll have enough to be able to use as cut flowers and keep those gorgeous displays outside as well. It's one of the most beautiful ones, yeah. and it's absolutely free with purchase today. And if you've already got one of these that yeah just make room for two or three yeah, you can go in pots make as well room. peonies can do well in pots but these be a fairly big, Needs deep to be a big pot. pot yeah and obviously you're going to need to look after it with watering and stuff a little yeah. bit more than you would if it was in a border but it's completely doable yeah i, I think peonies in pots is a great idea because um you know the flying season isn't really long so once it's flowered that you can again move just move it. that pot uh, but that's your free <laughs> gift uh, very quickly if you're not a club member you should do it today um, it's five pounds for the year, and that will give you ten percent off all the plants and the compost and the pots. Every time yeah. you place an order, ten percent off absolutely all of those things. You do get five percent if you look at any of the outdoor living and gifts and things on the so website. That as like, well. I mean, that seems like tools, isn't it? As yeah, well. yeah, exactly. We, uh, yeah. So you can get 5% off those too. You get £20 worth of your garden vouchers to use throughout the year. That's wonderful. That's, to me, that's free money. That's the way I like to think about that. And they're not like, <laughs> they're not fiddly vouchers. It's £5 off your order. Exactly. £5 off Times your order. Four. And it all comes out to you in a welcome pack. You get a welcome yeah. pack sent to your house, which is lovely. So uh, if you want to say more money, join us club right now. Right. Uh, Tony's emailed. He emailed. Ah, he emailed in the first part of the show. What was he saying? Oh, he was making his wooden wooden planters. planters. Isn't it, didn't he? Yeah. Oh, look at that! Are they hey, been made out of like um, decking planks. They, aren't they are fantastic. Do you know? I've always I, I fancied doing that. I might do that myself. You know, because I want some for out. It's quite easy to do, isn't See, it? See, I always said I was rubbish in DIY, tools? but I've got, I've, I'm a bit better now I've got the right tools, but that, they look, I mean, they're all... It's, it's getting the corners to me. So they're all That's really the well I'm made, aren't they? At. Oh, has he overlapped the corners? I That's think great. a good way. See, I'm always yeah. struggling with that. So you don't have to do that in 45, 45 degree angle? Yeah. Mitering. That's it, Stu. Well done. Oh, I'm going to do it like you've done it. They look I great. I wonder why he's going to be growing in them. Let us know. Yeah. What are you growing in them? Fruit, veg. What are you putting in them? Flowers, a bit of everything. But well done, they look great. Thank you so much. I was yeah, thanks I'm, for sending that. Yeah, we both were saying, what do those planters look like? <laughs> now we know. Right, uh, quick mind of some of your favourites today. So these have been really popular. Yeah. I think they're stunning though. I mean, I always think white lilies. You Which cannot classic. beat them. Yeah. Classic. And they, they look lovely by themselves, but again, they were amongst other colours in your border. They just almost make the other colours pop more. That's what you're getting. You're getting 10 of these, or you can double up and go for 20. Every one of those will grow a gorgeous stem of white lilies yeah, this and year. Yeah, you can see that they are oh. sprouting. They are absolutely ready to be planted. And you will get multiple flowers per stem on there as well. You know, once these are established and once they grow, we are talking maybe between somewhere between five and nine flowers per stem on wow. here. Um, it can get up to a metre tall in its first year. It might get a little bit taller in subsequent years as well. And they're just iconic flowers, aren't they? I love that oh, pure yeah. white, a wedding staple. They're a florist's favourite as well because of the fact that they're quite vigorous in the way that they grow and that you have these gorgeous sturdy stems on there too. And it's just ridiculously easy, low maintenance. Plant them, water and feed, and leave them alone yeah. and they'll come back for you every single year. Yeah, they're not difficult. I mean, they no. look like they'd be difficult because they're so beautiful, but they're not at all. All the plant instructions are on the packet. I'm going to say, I'm assuming it says four to six inches deep in terms of planting. Uh, yeah, I would imagine we'll so. We'll have a look though, just in case. Let's guess. Uh, it does, yeah, so you go. <laughs> Uh, actually, no, three to four inches on three this one. Three to four inches yeah. plant depth, four to six inches plant spacing, because obviously you need to leave room because you're going to get multiple yeah. flowers up at the top. But again, I know, it's, I, I, I don't over worry about that. I'm not one of those people with a ruler. Yeah, well, when it comes to lilies, it's really not important. Yeah. Peonies, but, you need yeah. to worry about planting depth, but with lilies, about, not really. Exactly. If you're about, an inch or two out, about it won't four inches depth. 
I mean, I'm sure some of them are slightly deeper than that, but they're fine. Yeah. <laughs> they're fine. Uh, uh, but they are gorgeous and they are easy. 650019 is your item there. And loads you double up on those. Uh, then you've uh, you've adored the Pyrrhus collection. I mean, these are beautiful. Three different Pyrrhus, uh, all for 1297. I know. And they do flower, but we're saying really, uh, it's the foliage, isn't it? It's totally. It's all about the foliage here. And this is some incredible foliage. So the, the, the new, the baby foliage that comes through, you get the most beautiful shades there's corals there's pinks there's bright reds in there and it is absolutely incredible you get this color changing thing that happens on them you've got variegation on some of those leaves as well i always find if you're if you're looking at the back of a border and i've noticed it with my spider's web fatsia the variegation you know when you were saying yesterday about how bright colors bring them yeah. forward the variegation on a plant does that as well you can yeah. it really brings it forward to you you do get these lovely branching clusters of lily of the valley like flowers on there and they do last a good maybe four to six weeks so you have got that lovely interest that happens with them and that happens um, sort of late spring early summer I must admit, i'm always surprised when my pyramid does flower because i kind of forget it is going to flower yeah. and then it's like oh yeah you're flowering and it's really pretty yeah. you'll prune those off once they've finished flowering but it really is all about the glorious foliage the lovely evergreen foliage that you've got on here sunny spot part shade spot they're going to be absolutely yeah. fine they do here. like a, a, an acid soil did you say that back? No, I didn't. No. So yeah, you do want to put some in, uh, them in some ericaceous compost, but they, I mean, we're talking about winter hardy, easy to grow, mm. very little maintenance, not much pruning, you know, simple, simple gardening this, but stunning. Yeah, and all three for that amazing price, twelve ninety seven. So what they'd look good in, you know those, um, Torino pots, the three ninety nine ones. Yeah, certainly initially right. they're going to get much bigger, so you, they're but not going to work for ages. Year, yeah, two years. Put them in there for the time being. They're going to look really pretty. Yeah, I just think it really makes the colour stand out. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, yeah. that's really cute. Yeah. Love so it. actually, you get three pots for three ninety nine. Uh, put one in the basket, then use the code. Three of the plants, the period for for under thirty pounds. So that whole order. Yeah, really. It's a great order, actually. It? It's yeah. a great basket. I like them, though. That's all. But, yeah, after a couple of years, you would need to, to put them on. Yeah. Move them on. All uh, right, next we're going to move on to our Kitchen Bay um, bush here. And I think, because this one's been really popular, and I'm really glad. It's an excellent price on here. It's only £7.99 or £7.19 if you are in our discount club. I love having bay in my garden. I've got a bigger bay bush, but I love the size of this. I think it's really, really sort of cute. It's lovely, but it is a handy plant. It's evergreen, but you're going to use it in your cooking. And it's exciting. I love going out when I'm doing my cooking. And I've got... I haven't got loads of <coughs> herbs out there, but I've got my bay, I've got my rosemary, yeah, I've got my thyme. Go really... and grab those. Those are the staples. And those are the ones we use the most. And it's amazing what a few fresh herbs, what a difference it can actually make. Uh, Seven ninety nine is all you're going to pay for this one. It's about thirty cents a week. So, I mean, bay trees can be really expensive, particularly if they've been shaped into standards but that is the most affordable one i think we've ever ever it is had. it definitely is and i love the fact that you can go out and you can get your 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 bay leaves as and when you need them i love the size of it as well yeah right this sedum is mm. incredible and it was only um i've got sedums in my garden i do love them but i haven't got this variety and it was only when you when you when you told me yesterday, Bex, that they said won Chelsea Plant of the Year. Plant of the Year. 2019. 2019. Yeah, I mean, look hey, at them. Hey, Stu, have you got um, a picture of the... the the osteospernum that this beat, African Daisy. It's one on our website. I love it. I'm growing some right now. But this won over the osteospernum in 2019. And I think it just shows the caliber of this plant. So it won over that. No, and that no. is the most amazing osteospernum that's on our website right I now. I love it. I grew, that, I grew that air. last year. It was, it was absolutely stunning. But that lost out to this. So how good is this cedar? Yeah. It gives you an idea, doesn't it? And what we did earlier, we've got the gorgeous miners merlot coming up but that just gives you look at those together mm. i mean in fact i'll just do it like that so you can i mean look absolutely incredible it is i mean that really is something isn't it yeah yeah i think if you can and you want to go for all for you know both of these items plant those together <laughs> under plant the sedum around the bottom of the uh, of the miners merlot that yeah. will be incredible they'll be really happy in together, fact i'm quite they? tempted to do that now yeah i might move my that's... sedum to underneath my miners merlot because that'll look I mean, amazing look, that's that 
so good. So good. Right, so obviously you're not getting these yet, but not I bet yet. We'll they, come to those. I think they're going to end up going in your basket. <laughs> Yeah, sedum is really, really um, a, a versatile plant. I think it can live in a lot of different locations. It can be great as ground cover. It can be great as a gap filler. It can be fantastic for underplanting. It works beautifully in a display all on its own in a pot. Rockeries, borders, yeah. pots, it really doesn't matter. And this is clearly why it's won its Chelsea Award. And they're actually extremely easy to propagate as well. Um, <laughs> I, I, I had some little babies that formed on my flower stems last year and uh, I propagated many of them and gave them to friends. But it's all about the colours on it. I mean, the new growth is extraordinary. It's got yellows, it's got peaches in there. The, the leaves are variegated, so you've got creams, you've got greens, uh, coupled with the gorgeous yellow flowers. But remember, it is an extraordinary plant, but it won Chelsea Plant of the Year 2019. Only one plant wins. And the runners-up were amazing, but this was a winner. Yeah, I mean, to be honest, if it makes the shortlist, if it makes the shortlist, we would still be shouting about yeah. that because it's amazing to make the shortlist for it to win. Oh, amazing. Yeah. Um, and so easy to grow. Remarkably easy. Super easy. Again, leave it alone. Yeah. Just leave it alone. But those, look at the colours. Oh, God. <laughs> makes my sedums look rather dull. They're not dull, actually. I love mine, but they're far, far more exciting. Beautiful, absolutely stunning. And then um, the plant that we just coupled these with is the Euphorbia Miners Merlot. Um, I remember an episode of, uh, of Gardener's World actually, where they did a, a, a section on Euphorbias, and I was I, I was really blown away. Mm. But strange enough, I don't remember this one being mentioned. Oh really? Uh, no. Um, and I've got, I say, I've got euphorbias, but mine, mine are sort of, I've got a light green, a dark green, but this Merlot is just amazing. I mean, there are not many plants in the garden that have this colour foliage. This is yours, with the, with the yellow flowers right now. Yeah. It's a live cam. No, it's not as it goes, but <laughs> no, was that two like, days ago? Li yeah, two days ago. I went out in the garden and I, I videoed this specifically so that I could bring it here to show you because it's one of the most stunning plants and it's, it's so easy. I planted it last year. Probably it was this size when I planted it. It grows quite quickly. Yeah. It grows to its size very, very quickly. So if you want to fill a gap in a border, you'll do it within its first season. It can grow to two feet by two feet. I think that's pretty much as, as big as mine is probably going to get now. And it's done that in one year. So nice, fast growing, lovely, rich, dark purple leaves. You get lovely kind of um, olive green leaves a bit further down as well. The, the, the yellow of those flowers, the sort of limey, greeny yellow flowers, and it really pops against that foliage, doesn't I mean, it? it does, yeah. And look at all the buds. Look at how many buds are on there waiting to come out. Two little um, ladybirds. Actually, there was loads of ladybirds in that plant. Really? And it's great, great. having ladybirds in your garden. Of course garden, it is. Because they're going to eat all the other things yeah. that munch on your plants. Yeah, all the aphids and all those things we don't want. Exactly. Um, and we saw a picture of that earlier, surrounded by daffodils. And because it flowers this kind of time. Yeah, was that Elaine who sent that picture in? I feel like it was Elaine who sent it in. Yeah, I think it was. Yeah. It, yeah, and they look great with the yellow daffodils really as well, good. didn't they? Uh, so you get all three of those. I, I would personally... If you like the combination of those two together, get them both. I'm to I'm, I, I love the suggestion and I'm going to do it. I'm going to move my yeah. sedum to where my Merlot is because it's going to look beautiful. Well, um, we are nearly out of time. You can still order Boom. after the show. Uh, don't forget, Bex is on QVC tonight at 9, 9 o'clock and tomorrow morning, 9 and 10. Uh, I've got a few days off, so I'm going to be, doing some, I'm going to be doing some gardening. Yes. I'm glad you need a break. I You've don't. been working quite hard. I need to get the garden sorted. There you go. <laughs> You've got time. I've, I've <laughs> sorted the greenhouse out. I've got loads growing in there. It looks great, but another garden. I need to do some proper weeding, um, some proper cutting back the hedges, some proper gardening work. And I Good. can't, I can't wait, actually. On. Um, we both back together next week on Wednesday and Wednesday Thursday. Wednesday and Thursday. Uh, I'll be shows... back in on Sunday with Adam. You've got Adam on it. Adam's great. Uh, so do enjoy the show on Sunday. But don't forget, Free postage, we're going to spend over £40. Join the club if you're not a member, and your free gift is a Sarah Bernhardt gorgeous peony. But it's been a lovely show, and big thank you to everyone that's interacted as well. Yeah, thank you so much for sending all your pictures. You know how much we love it. Um, it's been, it, it, we love having you part of our garden community here. Yeah, so we'll see you very soon. But uh, keep ordering, get those oleanders as well, and uh, we'll both see you uh, very soon. Take care, and have a lovely, lovely weekend.